Are you constantly feeling overwhelmed by the rapid pace of life and the endless changes around you? Do you find yourself struggling to maintain your peace in a world full of chaos and noise? Have you ever wished for a way to cultivate inner strength and calmness that remains unshaken regardless of external circumstances? What if there was a straightforward yet profound approach to achieving a sense of balance and well-being even in the midst of life's storms? Stoicism, an ancient philosophy with roots stretching back over two millennia, offers timeless wisdom that is surprisingly relevant for our modern lives. It teaches us how to build resilience, focus on what we can control, and embrace challenges as opportunities for growth. But how can we start incorporating these powerful Stoic principles into our daily routines? How can we use Stoicism to not just survive, but thrive in today's fast-moving, complex world? In a society that often values material success over inner peace, Stoicism provides a counterpoint urging us to find contentment and virtue in our actions and perspectives. But what are the practical steps we can take to begin this journey of transformation? How do we apply Stoic teachings to navigate personal relationships, professional challenges, and the quest for a meaningful life? This journey into Stoicism is not just about reading ancient texts. It's about living the philosophy, making it a part of every decision reaction, and interaction in our lives. It's about learning to detach from the things we cannot control and focusing our energy on what we can. But where do we start? How can we make these principles accessible and actionable in our everyday lives? As we dive deeper into the principles of Stoicism, we'll explore strategies for developing self-awareness, practicing gratitude, and cultivating a mindset geared towards personal growth and resilience. We'll look at ways to apply Stoic wisdom to modern-day problems, from dealing with stress and anxiety to improving our relationships and finding purpose in our work. Are you ready to start a transformative journey that bridges the gap between ancient wisdom and contemporary life? Are you prepared to explore how Stoicism can offer you a more grounded, peaceful and fulfilling way to live? Let's begin this journey together, discovering how to turn philosophical insights into practical actions, leading to a life marked by tranquility, resilience and deep satisfaction. Stoic ideas agree with the idea of getting away from people and things. Stoicism is an old Greek theory that tells us to stay calm by dealing with things we can't change and taking action on things we can. This movie will talk about stoic ideas and how they can be used to get away from people and situations. The first thing you should do is briefly separate yourself from that person. Take a break from that person first. No matter what's going on around us, stoicism says it's important to keep our peace inside. Take a short break before you let go of someone. It's not about staying away from them. It's about getting a clear picture and not letting our emotions steer us wrong. Cicero, a Stoic philosopher, wrote to Lucilius that people should take a step back and think about themselves. He put down, retreat into your own mind often, associate with those who bring out your best and welcome those you can uplift. We learn as much as they do when we help them learn. This means you should take a short break to think about your feelings and circumstances. Stoicism says that we can choose how to behave and that making a separate choice lets us do that. Get some alone time to think about and feel what you're feeling. At this point, look at the situation without any bias and without any strong feelings in the way. This Stoic view fits with Seneca's lessons, which stress how important it is to understand yourself in order to control your feelings. According to Stoicism, our feelings are like the weather. They come and go. The mental storm will calm down when you take a step back. This will help you decide what to do next. It's not about getting away from your worries. It's about pausing to find peace in the middle of all the noise. 
Stoicism teaches us that our feelings can get in the way of our judgment when life gets too hard. Taking a short break, like a walk or some alone time, can help you clear your thoughts. When you're calm, you can use logic instead of your feelings to make choices. Find a quiet place to think. The goal is not to run away, but to better understand what's going on. Think about whether you need to stay away. The second step in letting go of people is to really think about whether or not it's the right thing to do. Stoicism teaches us to act logically and with good character, with the goal of reaching eudaimonia, which means happiness through doing the right thing. Stoics believe in oikeiosis, which means that we naturally want to be good and get along with others. However, not all relationships help us become better people. Epictetus and other Stoic thinkers told us to think about our relationships and pick them carefully. There are things we can't change around us, but we can change how we respond to them. You should think about how you feel about the person. Do they make you better as a person and improve your health? Stoicism says that leaving relationships that are bad for you is not a sign of weakness, but of knowledge and good character. Stoic teacher Epictetus, who was once a slave, emphasized this idea by writing about inner freedom that doesn't depend on what other people say. Let's say you're with friends and one of them does something that doesn't seem right. Stoicism says that just like you should be careful when picking friends, you should also think about whether or not spending more time with this person is a good idea. You could say it this way. Does being with this person make my life easier or easier? Does it help me get better and be happy? According to the Stoics, this is a test of how wise your choices are. Stoicism tells people to make decisions that help them get better. In other words, you should think about whether this person is making your life easier or harder. The Stoics think that good friends are like sunshine for our minds and help us grow as people. Imagine a friend as a plant. If you water it, it will grow and be healthy, but if you don't, it will get sick and die. Also, think about whether the people around you are like water that keeps the plant alive or rains that kill it. If being with someone is like being in the sun, that's great. If not, Stoicism says you should think about getting some space. Keep in mind that this isn't about being mean or avoiding problems. It's about making decisions that are good for your mind and feelings. Stoicism seeks to improve everything in life, including the people we hang out with. Talk to a person you believe in. Stoicism values self-control and strength, but it doesn't advocate being by yourself all the time. People are naturally social, and a big part of Stoicism is getting help and advice from people we trust. Stoics say that when you separate, you should be honest with someone you trust. It fits with their idea of an intellectual friend, someone with whom you can talk about your greatest hopes and fears. The great Stoic philosopher Seneca said that friendship is just as important for living a good life as having good sense. He said to use a friend like a mirror to look at yourself and talk about your feelings and thoughts. These kinds of talks are not only helpful, but they also lead to new ideas and knowledge. Stoicism says that being open with other people makes our community and ties stronger, which is important for learning to separate. Think about what will happen if you put space between yourself and someone. The fifth step of Stoic philosophy is to think carefully about what you might get out of separating from someone. Stoicism encourages us to think ahead and think about how our actions will affect people in the future. This fits with the Stoic idea of proiresis, which means focusing on the present while also thinking about what might happen in the future. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic leader, talked about how important it is to make good use of our time and not waste it. When you're thinking about separating from someone, ask yourself if it will help your growth and mental health or if it could lead to loses that you could have avoided. Stoicism tells us to carefully weigh the pros and cons of each option and make choices based on logic and morals. Imagine walking through a forest 
where there are many trails to choose from. Following the ideas of Stoicism, separating yourself from someone is like choosing which path to follow. Like planning a move in a game, Stoicism promotes forward thinking. Making a choice to create space is like picking a road through the woods. You need to think about where it might lead you. Stoic thinkers thought that guessing what will happen helps you make better decisions. Imagine that the person you want to leave is at the beginning of the forest and you are at a fork in the road. You can choose to go in a different direction or follow their road. Ask yourself, what might happen if I stop being around this person? This is like looking at the different trails and thinking about where they lead. Stoicism says that making plans ahead of time is like having a map in the woods. It helps you make better decisions. Before making a choice, you should think about what could happen. This isn't to tell the future, but to help you find your way through life's many roads. Step away from social media for a while. These days, social media has a big effect on our mental health. Stoicism, which is known for being wise over time, can help us deal with how we use technology and the huge amount of knowledge that comes at us all the time. In the sixth step of Stoic separation, it is suggested that you take a break from social media. Even though Stoic thinkers like Seneca lived in a very different time, they also had to deal with things outside of themselves that could make it difficult to maintain inner tranquility. Seneca wrote about the things that keep us from living a full life, saying, we don't have a short life, but rather we wast a lot of it. This calm view is especially useful in this digital era where constant information and social comparison can take our attention away from what's important. The Stoic idea of apatheia, which means becoming emotionally calm, is important here. When we take a break from social media, we give ourselves time to think and lessen the outside noise that can make us feel bad. Following Seneca's advice, this step is about putting digital distractions aside so we can focus on what's important. Social media can be thought of as a big puzzle. It can be as hard sometimes as putting together a puzzle with too many parts. Stoicism says that you should put down this digital problem for a while and give your thoughts a break. To put it simply, it's like putting the puzzle pieces down for a while so that you can come back to them with a new perspective and more mental energy. Stoicism says that our brains need breaks, just like our bodies do. Managing social media is like juggling a never-ending stream of puzzle pieces, such as news, updates and pictures, which can be too much at times. Stoic thinkers say that taking a break from all this digital noise can help us focus and keep our thoughts clear. Think of social media as a puzzle that you need to put together. There's no wrong time to stop when it starts to feel too much. This is like putting the puzzle down for a while and doing something else, like going for a walk, reading a book, or just relaxing without a computer. Stoicism says that taking this break will help keep your mind from getting too busy with puzzle parts. In the same way that you choose when to work on a puzzle and when to take a break from it, your online time should be managed. That being said, it's not about giving up social media for good, it's about keeping it from becoming too hard to understand. In this way, you can make sure that your digital activity stays healthy and doesn't become too much for your mind. Put your own wants first. In the last step of the detachment process, which is explained in the practical guide, you focus on what you need. The idea of this fits well with Stoicism, which stresses independence and inner strength. A philosopher who was born into slavery and is linked with Stoicism, Epictetus stressed how important it is to know what we can control and what we can't. Focusing on what you need is an example of the Stoic concept of focusing on what you can control. Stick to the seventh step of Stoicism, which says to focus on our basic wants instead of material things. Instead, it focuses on spiritual values and mental health. Consider the Stoic way of willing pain. 
in which people put themselves in difficult situations on purpose in order to build resilience. When you use this idea, focus on your basic wants because they help you stay emotionally stable and have good morals. Living a life of moral virtue, according to the Stoic concept, virtue is the only good, is the only way to truly be happy. Epictetus, who was famous for his Stoic ideas, put this thought into a good sentence, realizing one basic truth, that there are things we can manage and things we can't, is the key to happiness and freedom. Understanding this is important for making sure our actions are morally good and for finding true happiness. By focusing on what we can change, our thoughts, actions and reactions, we give ourselves the strength to be strong in our relationships and in life. Think of life as a spread with different foods, some of which are good for you and some of which are not so good. Stoicism says that when you're picking out things for your life, it's best to focus on what's really important, like picking out food at a table. Like picking out healthy snacks, Stoicism is about making smart decisions in life, like picking out the better food at a table. Stoic thinkers say that what we really need isn't always the same as what we want. They tell us to choose what will be good for us in the long run instead of what seems good at the moment. Imagine that your life is a spread with different foods, hobbies and events to choose from. Stoicism says that instead of trying to take everything, you should pick the things that make your life better and make you happy in the long run. It's the same as choosing things that are good for your inner health. Take some time to think about what you really need to feel better and grow emotionally. This is like picking snacks that are good for you and fill you up, not just tasty for a short time. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to what we really need which makes life's menu more satisfying in the long run. Stoicism can help you learn how to let go of certain people and events, which is a process called detachment. Taking short breaks, thinking about why we're separating ourselves, having honest conversations, setting limits for our emotions, thinking about what might happen if we do something, stepping away from outside influences like social media and putting our basic needs first are some of the most important steps on this path. By doing these things, we align our actions with the virtues of the Stoics, which helps us handle our relationships and situations with knowledge and clarity. Stoicism, which is known for its lasting wisdom, teaches us that separation doesn't mean being emotionally uncaring. Rather, it means finding inner peace and resilience in the middle of life's difficulties and the complexities of human relationships. Stoic ideals set us on the path to a life full of virtue, knowledge and mental health. These lessons tell us to be happy with the present and not worry about what will happen in the future. An important Stoic philosopher named Seneca said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. As the wise Stoic Seneca once said, it's not that we don't have much time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Like a fast-moving river, our time is both valuable and short. You've probably heard the phrase, time is the one thing we can't get back. Taking this ancient knowledge as our guide, we'll look at it from a Stoic point of view. We'll talk about seven Stoic habits that will put you ahead of 98% of people and help you not only survive life's plays, but really succeed in them. How to develop a cosmic perspective. Just for a moment, picture yourself going back in time thousands of years and sitting on top of a mountain with one of the great stoic philosophers while the stars shine down below you. You're talking about the stresses of modern life while telling stories about the hard things that people have to deal with. For example, the push to succeed the non-stop comparison on social media and the fast-paced nature of life. Your old friend points up above you. The infinite universe spreads out in front of you with swirling galaxies and bright stars. The Stoic says something that has been true for a very long time. Our lives are but a brief shadow in the big picture of the world. 
How does this cosmic view help you get ahead of 98% of other people? It's about how you think. Most people are stuck in the present moment. They make every mistake seem worse, think about every complaint for a long time, and are limited by social standards. The Stoics, on the other hand, zoom out. They think more clearly because they realize how small we are in comparison to the world. Let us put this into context with a real-life case. Think of a time when a co-worker got a raise you thought you earned, or when a casual comment made your day terrible. Such events can take up all of your time. But when you look at things from a global point of view, you can see how temporary these events are. The Stoic mind asks, will this matter in the grand scheme of things, instead of getting angry or envious? Most of the time the answer is a strong no. This isn't about putting down real feelings or problems. Instead, it's a way to make sense of things. It helps you focus on the things that really matter. You get a big advantage when you're not bogged down by small setbacks or distracted by unimportant things. While 98% of people are looking for short-term approval, you're using your energy to take purposeful action based on a deep understanding of life's bigger picture. Think about some of the most famous and great people in history. Many of them did this skill of looking out, whether they were aware of it or not. In the middle of chaos, it provided them with a clear goal and resilience in the face of hardship. So, how can you live your daily life with this cosmic view? Spend some time reflecting before you start your day or when you have to make a tough choice. Please take a moment to picture the bigger picture of life. Learn about how big our world is. These kinds of habits can help you stay calm and clear-headed. Getting something good from bad visualization. Imagine yourself in an old market where there are lots of people, colorful stalls selling clothes and fruits, and a lot of noise. Among all the noise, you're pulled to an area where a Stoic philosopher is teaching a lesson that seems to be at odds with itself. Instead of picturing a life full of endless happiness and success, he tells them to think about the bad things that could happen. He says that this is the key to a happy and strong life. At first, this practice called negative visualization may not make sense. After all, we're told all the time to think positively and only think about our goals. But first, let's talk about why this stoic practice might be the key to getting ahead of 98% of people. Most people are always afraid of what they don't know or what might happen. They are caught off guard by life's surprises because they have never thought about them ahead of time. Because of this, they are weak, impulsive, and often unable to deal with problems. What if, though, you could build up a mental shield? If you've already thought about the problems that might come up, they might not throw you off track. Imagine that you are a business owner. Most business owners only think about making money and being successful, but sometimes you think about problems that could happen, like a bad product, a drop in market demand, or even a global slowdown. Now, instead of making you feel hopeless, this image should push you to take action and get ready. You could make your goods more varied, put money into study, or start a disaster fund. So when things go wrong, which they often do in the uncertain business world, you're not just still alive, you're living. Negative thinking can also help you be more grateful which is a powerful skill that we often forget about in our rush for more. We can appreciate the present more by sometimes thinking about what we wouldn't have if we didn't have things we take for granted, like good health, a loving family, or even just a meal. Being more thankful not only makes us feel better mentally, but it also pushes us to make the most of what we have, which gives us an immediate advantage over others. Remember what Seneca said, he suffers more than necessary, who suffers before it is necessary. You are not creating bad things when you think about possible problems and visit them through negative visualization. Instead, you're giving your mind the flexibility to deal with anything that life throws at you. Basically, while most people might be fearing and trying to avoid possible failures, 
you're getting ready for them and making yourself stronger. This gives you an advantage over the unaware and promises resilience in the face of hardship. Choosing to be uncomfortable, you're in a peaceful garden surrounded by old olive trees. A warm breeze from the Mediterranean touches your face. You see a small group of people gathered around a stoic thinker. Wearing rough clothes on purpose and choosing to sit on the rough ground instead of a nearby bench is a strange way to do an exercise. What was his message? Growth is found on the edges of pain. The stoic practice of choosing to go through hardships doesn't seem to fit with today's world, which is full of tools and technologies made to make our lives easier and more comfortable. This could be the very reason why it's so useful for getting ahead of 98% of other people. Think about the basic ideas behind progress and growth. Progress usually happens when we step outside of our comfort zones, whether it's building muscle, learning a new skill, or developing resilience. But most people automatically want things that are easy and comfortable. They often reach a peak in their personal and work lives because of this, stuck inside the limits they set for themselves. Let us make this real. Think about sports people. While their friends may be happy with daily workouts, people who really do well often add difficult workouts that push their thoughts and bodies to the limit. For example, they might train at high elevations, in harsh weather, or even when they are tired. This purposeful pain doesn't break them. It makes them stronger. Accepting purposeful pain also changes the level of satisfaction we expect. For example, when you fast once in a while, the easy pleasure of a small meal becomes deeply fulfilling. Seneca said it well, the spirit should be getting ready for hard times when things are going well. Adding this silent workout to your routine can change everything. It could be as easy as taking cold showers every so often, fasting, or putting yourself in situations that are hard on purpose, that help you reach your goals. In a world where everyone is always looking for comfort, choosing to be uncomfortable on purpose not only builds resilience, but also distinguishes you. While some people might avoid difficulties, you actively seek them out because you know they hold unmatched chances for growth and recognition. At the heart of a peaceful yard, is the ability to handle the duality of power. You are sitting with other excited listeners who are drawn to the knowledge of a calm elder. The air is filled with fragrant flowers and soft streams. He gives us a simple but deep choice. There are things we can manage and things we can't. He says that mastering this difference is the key to unmatched freedom and success. One of the basic ideas of Stoicism is this difference between two types of control. But how does this old piece of advice put you ahead of 98% of people today? Interestingly, a lot of people today waste a lot of time, energy and mental currency on things they can't control, like other people's views, market changes, global events or even the weather. Not only does this imbalance cause them needless stress, but it also takes their attention away from areas where they can actually make a difference. Let's apply this to modern jobs now. Think of a young worker, Jane. She is telling the board of her business about a new idea. Even though she can't change what they decide in the end, she is responsible for how well she prepared, how clear her talk was, and how she answered their questions. By focusing on these things that can be changed, she makes a strong case that leaves no room for regrets, no matter what happens. Epictetus, a famous philosopher, said, We should always be asking ourselves, is this something I can control or not? As a guide, this mantra tells us where to put our efforts for the best results. It changes your life to live by the dichotomy of power every day. Being self-aware is the first step. Every time you face a problem or have to make a choice, take a moment to think about what you can control. Don't forget these. When it comes to things you can't change, you should be aware of them, but not let them affect your emotions or thoughts. You get a strategic edge by understanding this stoic concept. 
Most people might be caught up in circumstances, but your insight and targeted action put you miles ahead. It's not about giving up and letting fate happen to you. Instead, it's about dancing with fate, taking charge of what you can control and accepting what you can't. It's easy to use writing to help you think about yourself. Set aside a few minutes every day, maybe at dawn or dusk, to write down your thoughts, difficulties, blessings and new ideas. Over time, this practice helps you understand yourself better, which helps you make decisions and have more resilience. While some people may get lost in life's currents, you use your book as a beacon to guide you with purpose and focus. In the poorly lit room of a strict school, a group of students huddle around their guide, seeing problems as chances to learn. A strange image, a windmill, is what he gives them. We can use problems to our advantage, just like the windmill uses strong winds that could knock down other buildings to power its machinery and grind grain. A calm view of problems goes against a lot of what makes people human. People usually give up, avoid, or get angry when they face problems, but the Stoics saw them as chances to learn, grow, and improve their character. To apply this Stoic concept to your life, start by changing the way you think about problems. When something goes wrong, ask yourself, what can this teach me? How can something that seems bad help me move forward? Over time, this way of thinking not only lessens the stress that problems can cause, but it also puts you in a good situation to use them to your advantage. Your Stoic-inspired ability to turn hurdles into stepping stones not only ensures personal resilience, but also puts you miles ahead in the journey of life in a world where many people are discouraged by challenges. People see walls where you see doors, and where they see ends, you see starts. Drawing from this ancient Stoic theory, we are told that the way to really get ahead is not to chase things outside of ourselves, but to control our own thoughts, feelings, and actions. As we've gone through these seven different paths today, I hope you've gained life-changing ideas that will help you get ahead in the big race of life. Remember that Stoicism isn't just about knowing things, it's about using what you know when bad things happen in life. Take a moment to think about where you fall on this list of seven ways. Which areas beg to be looked into more deeply and brought together? Please feel free to share your thoughts and stories in the comments area. Which of these ways did you like? Have you learned anything else from Stoics that has really changed the way you see things? Let's create a safe space where deep conversations can happen and everyone can grow. It's always possible to make up for a mistake. You can choose to get back up after life knocks you down. Unknown, have you ever felt like the odds are stacked against you and been knocked down by life's constant problems? As we go through life, there are times when it feels like everyone is against us. Other people are more likely to write you off when you're down, thinking you'll always be a loser. But here's the truth, everyone will doubt you. That's your chance to show them they're wrong. A comeback is the way to make things right. Not just any comeback, but one so big that it shuts up everyone who was doubting. I can still clearly remember the times when life squished me. I felt beaten, hurt, and almost unimportant. But I knew there were people who really wanted me to never rise again. They wanted me to fail and never reach my full potential. That's when something in me lit on fire. I told everyone that this is not the end of my story. I took a break from the world, thought about it again, and came back months later changed. You see, life gives us all kinds of problems, and how you handle them shows what kind of person you are. Everything for defense. I wasn't the same guy when I came back. I'm stronger and more durable now, and it's all because I decided to bring myself back. Now it's your turn. You have the power to go further than my journey. You can complete any task, whether it's learning a new skill, making a lot of money, or building a great body. People who didn't believe in you before will be amazed when you do. 
Let me show you seven important steps that will help you turn your life around and make the best comeback you've ever dreamed. Enter Ghost Mode. We're going to talk about Ghost Mode in this section, which is an important step for anyone who wants to make the best comeback of their life. Think about this. While most people are begging for likes and attention on social media, you can go in a different, deeper direction. It's a road that many great people have taken throughout history, a time when they were invisible and worked hard without being seen or disturbed by the attention of others. This is ghost mode, which is what makes a real return possible. Let's talk about ghost mode in a real way now. It's not just about not being seen, it's a trip of deep reflection. As the world's noise fades away, you can hear your own thoughts and face your inner fears. You have to face your deepest feelings here, like your fears, pain and trauma. An important reason why many people avoid this road is because it is difficult. There is a strong urge to flee into the safety of things like video games or social media. But keep in mind that these are only short-term getaways from real life. When you turn on ghost mode, you have to accept your darkness. The idea is to turn your pain and problems into a strong drive. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, once said, difficulty strengthens the mind as labor strengthens the body. Your bad feelings are not your enemies. They can fuel you to work harder and go beyond your limits. So, if you really want to make a big comeback, you need to go into ghost mode, focus on yourself, face your problems head on, and let them help you grow. Now is your chance to come out of the shadows, stronger and more tough than ever, ready to leave your mark on the world. Remember that the best comebacks happen when you are alone and honest with yourself. Together, let's set out on this trip, drawing on the past's knowledge and our own resilience. Pick up a new skill. One of the most important things you can do to make the best comeback of your life is to really focus on learning a new skill. This part isn't just about starting over. It's also about planning to get a tool that will not only help you become financially independent, but also fits with the idea of freedom. Take the idea of having a nameless channel as an example. It has a huge range of ways to make money, and it works well with the idea of ghost mode, which is a method I'm using myself on my journey of transformation. This advice isn't about getting a lot of skills. It's about learning one that speaks to you deeply and can change the course of your life. It's not true that being good at a lot of things will make you great. In fact, mastering a single skill that you've picked can lead to huge changes. You can look beyond nameless channels. The important thing is to pick a skill that looks like it could be useful and start learning it right away. Remember that the speed with which you begin this journey is directly related to the speed with which you finish it. This method is very different from the usual mistake that many people fall into, which is reading self-help books over and over again without using what they've learned. Putting what you know to use is the only way to really appreciate its worth. It's not because things are hard that we dare not venture, it's because we dare not venture that they are hard, said the Stoic philosopher Seneca. Remember this wise saying, and don't fall into the trap of becoming a mere collector of theoretical knowledge, like people who are always trying to improve themselves but never reach their full potential. Pick one skill and work on it really hard. Then, act on what you've learned. The key to a successful return is focused effort not a lot of different kinds of work. It's important to know that our world values specialty and the unique use of skills in order to make this approach work with the way things work now. This advice isn't just about learning new things. It's also about changing and using what you've learned in new ways that fit your personal goals and the needs of the market right now. With this new skill added to your return story, it will not only be a story of recovery, but it will also be a proof to the age-old truth that focused commitment leads to success. Getting even with someone. 
We're going to talk about what I like to call productive vengeance now. You are now on the third step toward making the best comeback of your life. This is an extraordinary step. Imagine this. Everyone who has hurt you, everyone who doubts you, and everyone who tells you you can't do it, becomes your source of power. You're not really out to get them in the usual sense. Instead, you want to show them how successful and impressive you are. You have to show yourself and everyone else that you're not what they thought you were. Some might say this way of thinking is wrong in today's world, where sensitivity is the norm. Do it for yourself, not for other people, they'll tell you. But this is for you. It's about turning the bad things that happen to you into something that moves you forward. This method, which my brother Musa Kala calls productive vengeance, is very useful. But let's make this idea bigger. When you get angry, it doesn't have to be about other people. It can also be about things that happened in your life that changed it. Think about a child who sees their mother having a hard time paying her bills. The child's revenge could be a promise to never have to go through that kind of trouble again. It's about turning pain and anger into a strong desire to succeed. So make a list. Write down the names of the people who didn't believe in you and the things that got you down. Then you went on a mission, not one of anger, but one of victory. The best thing you can say to people who didn't believe in you is that you succeeded. And keep in mind that every problem you encounter and every setback you experience is just another part of your story of resilience and triumph. We shouldn't let our past hold us back. Instead, let it help us reach our goals. Make history on this trip, this comeback of yours. Stoic strength. If you want to make the biggest comeback of your life, you need to unlock the power of Stoic resilience. Philosophy from the past, like Stoicism, teaches us how to focus on what we can control and let go of what we can't. This way of thinking is very important for getting through the rough seas of a big life change. First, figure out what parts of your life you can change. These include what you do, what you think, and how you respond to things that happen in your life. Then, try to let go of things that are out of your control, like other people's views, things that you can't change, or things that happened in the past. Stoic resilience is more than just getting through hard times. It's about seeing them as necessary parts of life's journey and using them to grow as a person. The purpose of challenges is to put your character and resilience to the test, not to be seen as barriers. For your return trip, it's important to remember what the Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Write in a notebook, meditate, and think about things every day as Stoic routines. These techniques are helpful in developing inner tranquility, mental clarity, and a focused mind, which are all things that anyone who wants to make a huge comeback needs to have. This fits with the Stoic idea that our real power comes from how we react to things inside ourselves, not from what happens outside ourselves. Adopting a patient attitude can be your leading light toward a strong and satisfying comeback in today's fast-paced world where change and uncertainty are the only things that stay the same. Don't forget that resilience is often the key to success. By following stoic principles, you'll be ready for the biggest comeback of your life. Networking that helps. Let's not forget the huge power of a strong network of people who can help us make the best comeback of our lives. Picture yourself on this difficult road, but you're not by yourself. There are people supporting you who believe in your long-term goals. These people could be teachers, friends, family, or even people you meet in different groups who share your goals. This group is more than just a support system. They're also your teachers and a place to talk things over. Yes, they give mental support, but they also give useful tips and comments that is very helpful. They give you new ideas, different points of view, and most importantly, they keep you centered. 
it's important to remember that the people you spend time with have a big effect on how you think and act. Now think about getting involved in groups that share your goals. It could be a business network, a local club, or an internet group. Talk about your trip, listen to what others have to say, and make connections that help both of you. It feels like being on a team where everyone wants each other to do well. As an example, think about the life of Thomas Edison. He had a group of people who shared his ideas who helped him through all of his failed tries to make the light bulb. Not only did they help him with technology, but they also kept his spirits up. This kind of support system was very important to his success in the end. As you make your comeback, don't forget to build and care for these connections. They are on this journey with you. And I want to tell you, dear friend, to value these relationships. Not only are they a part of your trip, they are also very important to your success. Remember that each and every thread in life is important, and these connections can help you make a story of an amazing comeback. Setting rules. If you want to make the biggest comeback of your life, know that the most important thing is to be mentally and physically disciplined all the time. When you practice mental discipline, you train your mind to stay focused on your goals. Not only is it about having a good attitude, but it's also about having a growth-oriented attitude that sees problems as opportunities to learn and grow. This means making choices every day that are in line with your comeback goals, even when the road is narrow and full of obstacles. Along with mental discipline, physical discipline is the other core. It means giving your body the love and care it needs by exercising regularly, eating well, and getting enough rest. Remember that a strong body is where a strong mind starts. A furnace where resilience, focus and endurance are formed, exercise is more than just a physical practice. Think of your daily schedule as a fabric with threads of work, exercise, rest and personal growth all woven together. Stick to this routine without fail because it's in this framework that you'll make success. Sticking to a well thought out plan is the only way to build the energy and habits that are necessary for a successful comeback. One of the Stoic philosophers, Seneca, said, It is not because things are hard that we do not dare, it is because we do not dare that things are hard. This quote really speaks to our journey. Every part of discipline, whether it's mental or physical, can be broken down into smaller, more manageable steps that all lead to the main goal of your biggest comeback. Let the knowledge of Stoicism lead you along this road. It will tell you that a focused mind and body have the power to overcome, rise and win. Dream Plus. Follow your passion by doing. On our way through life, we often miss the most basic yet deep way to be happy, which Einstein himself hinted at. A truly happy life is one in which people dream and then take action to make their dreams come true. Think about it. Love, peace and the happiness of thoughts are some of the most valuable things in life that you can't touch. It's impossible to put love, peace or the sweetness of your thoughts into words, but they are worth so much. Most of the time, we only value things that cost us something. We might not value our dreams enough because they are free. But when we follow Einstein's plan for happiness, we begin to understand how beautiful and important dreams are. Dreams are more than just passing thoughts. They are the building blocks of our future selves. But I want you to do more than just dream. I want you to dream big and go after your dreams with all your heart. Never forget that our mind is what makes us unique among living things. As if you had a third eye, this gift will help you see your goals clearly. Then put all of your heart, mind and strength into making these dreams come true. The most amazing thing about being human is our ability to make and change things. Life is uncertain. We never know what will happen next, whether it will be a win or a loss. But if you think of your life as a boat, your goals should be the anchor. They give you security and direction, so even when life gets rough, you can stay steady. 
It's an easy but deep lesson. Dream and then make your dreams come true. Your goals should be like an anchor that holds you down and gives you direction as you move through life. Remember that the only way to live a full and happy life is to follow your dreams with all your heart. So have big dreams, do something about them, and make your path exciting. Finally, as we come to the end of this interesting trip, remember that the lasting principles of Stoicism will help you make the biggest comeback of your life. Focusing can help you, learning new skills can be fun, and having a strong drive can keep you going. Your return is a proof to your resilience and commitment, not just a dream. Fellow Stoics, I want you to think about how these ideas can change your daily life and how you will use them to get through tough times. Feel strong and ready to handle anything that comes your way. Let's bring that idea up to date now. As you watch this movie, picture yourself getting better at keeping calm when things get tough. Stoic philosophy tells us that we can choose how to deal with the problems we face in life. You can develop resilience and peace, just as the Stoics did, by following these straightforward but effective Stoic steps. A wise old teacher once said, It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. With that in mind, let's get started on these steps. Remember that small changes you make today can make tomorrow more peaceful. Let's start. Become more self-aware. Ever take a moment to hear your own thoughts? I mean really pay attention. It's interesting to think that you're always having a talk with yourself. This conversation inside your head is calm some days and crazy other days. This mental conversation has a big impact on how you feel, what you do, and eventually, your life. Being self-aware means paying attention to this talk and figuring out why you think and feel the way you do. Without a doubt, this new knowledge changes everything. Picture yourself as two different people. One is the thinker, who gets mad, upset, or excited. The other is the observer, which is an interesting part of you that just watches everything without making any judgments. This observer is the silent part of you. Change roles and become the observer when things get tough. Keep an eye on your emotions and try not to let them take over. It's important to know that it's not about hiding your feelings. It's about being able to understand them without letting them rule you. When you're feeling something strong, stop for a moment and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? It's important to get to the bottom of things. This thought helps you do more than just react. The wise Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This doesn't mean ignoring your feelings. It means keeping your peace when they try to take it over. Start with the little things that bother you every day. The internet might be slow, or there might be a long line at the coffee shop. Look at your anger, try to understand it, and then let it go. Over time, you'll get stronger enough to use this on bigger problems. Remember that self-awareness is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. As it gets stronger, you'll be able to handle anything life throws at you with ease. Encourage resilience in the face of hardship. Life is like a game of baseball where anything can happen. The ball hits you in the face sometimes and you catch it. Think about spilling your coffee in the morning or getting soaked by a sudden rainstorm. It's annoying, right? But what about the curveballs in Major League Baseball? It's awful to lose your job, go through a breakup, or fail at something you worked hard at. When these things happen, it's normal to feel knocked down. What if we switched things around though? What if we didn't see these problems as evil jokes from fate, but as tough workouts that would make us stronger? To be resilient, you have to learn how to deal with the things that life throws at you. You're building your resilience with every hurdle you jump over and every no you push past. You shouldn't try to be tough or ignore the pain. Instead, you should face your problems head on and say, you won't beat me. Every problem, no matter how bad, has a lesson hidden inside it, not chosen for that job. 
It could be a lesson in getting things done or a sign that points you in the direction of your true calling. Trouble in your relationship? It could be a lesson on how to communicate better or find out more about yourself. The trick is to stop asking, why is this happening to me? And start asking, what can I learn from this? This way of thinking not only makes you stronger, it also makes you smarter. That smart man Seneca once said, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Your problems aren't just problems, they're your best teachers. First, look at your own war scars again. Think about those times. How did you get through it? What strengths did you find inside yourself? Get ready for the next round with these tips. Play through your wins when you face a new task. This is proof of your resilience, not a pep talk. Remember that resilience isn't something you're born with. It's something you learn by going through hard times. You can level up with every task. Mastering self-awareness and resilience will help you do more than just survive life's storms. It will teach you how to handle them with grace. There are no abstract ideas here. These are real-world strategies you can use right away. You'll not only become someone who can keep their cool in a crisis, but you'll also become smarter and stronger, ready to handle anything life throws at you. Take advantage of the power of perspective. Things in life can be very up and down, don't you think? You go from being up to being down in an instant. It's easy to get caught up in all this chaos. On the other hand, what if I told you that you have a secret weapon? Your point of view is this tool. What you think about what's going on around you can change the whole experience. Remember that what counts is not what happens to you, but how you handle it. At its heart is this idea of stoicism. Think of your mind as a mirror. It shows the good, the bad, and the ugly of everything. The important thing is that the mirror doesn't have to do anything. It just shows what's there. In the same way, you can be like that mirror. When something causes you stress, step back. Take a step back and look at it as if you are an outsider. Being detached doesn't mean you don't care. It means you're keeping your cool in a storm. It's up to you every day to decide how to react to a rude comment, get through a traffic jam, or handle a problem at work. These are the times when you can practice being calm. You can't change what other people do or what happens in your life, but you can change how you respond to it. This is where your real power is. It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it, said Epictetus. Remain cool and understand things instead of getting angry. First, let's do something easy. When a small thing bothers you next, take a moment to calm down. When you feel upset, ask yourself, is getting angry worth my peace? Then picture yourself acting in a calm and sensible way. This method will become your default reaction after some practice, even when you face bigger problems. Remember, changing your viewpoint isn't about ignoring your feelings. Rather, it's about handling them in a way that keeps you in control and at peace. This change in viewpoint is a powerful tool in your stoic toolbox. Use it wisely and watch as your world changes. Not because the world itself has changed, but because you have. Practice gratitude every day. Let's talk about gratitude. Practicing gratitude isn't about slapping a happy face sticker on every problem. It's about sifting through the mess and finding the glint of gold that tiny thing that's going right, even when the world seems topsy-turvy. And think about it. You're late, and the bus just zoomed past. Sure, it's a nuisance, but hey, now you've got a few unexpected moments under the open sky. Take a deep breath. Enjoy it. Stain your favorite shirt. It's a bummer, but also a nudge to mix up your wardrobe. Maybe that mesh shirt in the back of your closet is actually your next favorite. The trick? Start or end your day by pinpointing three small joys. A joke shared with a friend, the way the sun hits the buildings in the morning, an unexpectedly good sandwich, whatever floats your boat. This isn't about ignoring life's problems, it's about balancing the scales 
so you're not only pulled down by the tough stuff. Sure, when you're neck deep in a bad day, gratitude can seem like a distant fairy tale, but that's exactly when it's a game changer. Gridlocked in traffic, it's a solo show in your car waiting to happen. Overwhelmed at work, you're in the forge, getting stronger and better. Remember what Epictetus said about wisdom. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Embrace change as a constant. Everything changes. Seasons, trends, technology, people. It's the one constant in life. Resisting change is like trying to hold back the ocean. It's exhausting and useless. Embracing change, on the other hand, is powerful. It means you're adjustable, flexible, and strong. It's not about liking every change, but about not letting the fear of change control you. Building on this idea, remember, when something changes, take a moment to examine it. What's new? What's different? What's gone? Then think about how you can change. It could be learning a new skill for a new job or coming up with new ways to talk to someone who lives far away. Your strength is being able to adapt. Along with all of these changes, it's important to remember that even though everything around you is always shifting, your core beliefs, goals, and interests can stay the same. These things don't change. They're your rock in the life sea that's always shifting. When everything around you changes, remember these things. They will help you get through it. So, it's important to know that you can't know what will happen in the future, but you can get ready for it. Always be learning, growing, and giving yourself new challenges. This will help you deal with any changes that come your way, the more you do it. Remember that change is not the bad thing that will happen to you. It's a chance to improve yourself and grow. Learn to care about yourself and other people. Understanding and being kind are parts of compassion. The idea is that everyone, including you, is doing the best they can with what they have. When things go wrong, it's easy to be hard on yourself or others. But what if you tried to understand? What if you were kind to yourself and other people, like you'd be kind to a friend? When you mess up, be nice to yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Instead, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Be kind to yourself, like you'd be kind to a friend. Remember that being nice to yourself isn't selfish, it's important. If the cup is empty, you can't pour. Everyone you meet is going through something you don't understand. Remember this when you talk to other people. That nasty cashier. They might be having a hard time. Your friend who changed plans at the last minute? It's possible that they are too busy. Be kind and patient when these things happen. Someone wise once said, be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. Being kind to others makes the world a better place in the end. It starts with you and spreads. It makes your relationships better, lowers your stress, and makes you feel at peace. It's worth it, even when it's hard. Being compassionate in a world that feels tough and rude all the time will change not only your life, but also the lives of those around you. Create times of awareness. Have you ever thought about how often your mind is somewhere else? You could be at work, but your mind is on the weekend, or you could be with family, but your mind is on work. It is a common problem. Being in the present moment is a great way to calm down and live a more stable life. Don't get stuck in the past or worry about the future. Just be present in the here and now. To learn awareness, you don't need anything unique. Start with what you can feel. Right now, what do you see, hear, smell, touch, and taste? When you use your senses, you come back to the present. Try this while you eat, while you walk, or even while you talk. Take part in the event to the fullest. You don't have to worry or stress when you're fully present. There is no worry about tomorrow or sorrow about yesterday. You are just here, in this moment. This attention makes things clear and calm. You can deal with things with a clear head when you do this. 
True happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future, said Seneca. Train yourself to be more aware, just like anything else. Set timers to remember yourself to stop and check in with yourself during the day. Are you really here? How do you feel and what do you think? By doing this every day, your normal state will slowly change to one of more present and calmness. Try to get better, not better. Try not to be too perfect. It's an impossible standard that makes people feel stressed and let down. Instead, you should focus on learning, getting better, and going forward. There's no doubt that you try your best, but you do so, knowing that perfection is not the goal. The goal is growth. Every day, look for ways to improve. There could be a new way to solve a problem at work, or a new dish to learn how to cook. Hard times and easy times both can help you grow. It's about facing the unknown and getting out of your safe zone. There is always a way to move forward, no matter how small. Have fun with these times. Did you finish a hard task? Take a moment to appreciate how hard you worked. Have you learned from your mistake? That's progress. Enjoy it. An attitude of success and resilience is fostered by these small gatherings. Don't forget that growth is a process, not a goal. You can always learn something new and get better. This trip isn't about getting to a perfect state at the end. It's about changing and growing all the time. Instead of stress and pressure, you'll feel a sense of ongoing success and fulfillment as you adopt this way of thinking. Remember that people are social animals if you want to keep your relationships strong. Our ties with other people have a big effect on our health and happiness. But not every friendship is the same. It is very important to have healthy interactions based on respect, understanding and support. They make you feel better when things are bad and happy when things are good. Pay attention to making good ties. This means really listening to what other people have to say. It means having compassion and understanding. Additionally, it means making rules and following the rules of others. There are two ways to be in a healthy relationship. Watch out for relationships that are toxic, those that drain you, bring you constant bad vibes, or don't respect your limits. These situations can make you feel a lot more stressed out and unhappy. If you need to, you can stay away from them. Your health comes first. Relationships need care, just like a plant does. It's important to check in on a regular basis, spend valuable time together, and show respect. Don't forget that it's not how many friends you have that matters, but how good those friends are. A few close, healthy ties are worth a lot more than a lot of shallow ones. Accept that life is simple. Life can be hard, but a lot of the time, you make it harder on yourself. To be simple, you have to let go of the things that aren't important and focus on the things that are. Some of the easy things that bring joy are a walk in the park, some alone time with a book and a chat with a friend. Start by clearing out not only your actual area, but also your mind. What tasks, responsibilities or thoughts are not helping you? Allow them to leave. Pay attention to what makes your life better. Simplifying things like this lowers stress and makes it clear what's really important. A simple practice that you stick to can help you feel calm and stable. Having a general plan for your day can help you stay calm. It doesn't have to be strict. The important things, like work, rest and relationships, get the care they need. Finding happiness in the present is what simplicity is all about. Being happy doesn't mean having more, it means being grateful for what you already have. You still want more, but you do it from a place of happiness, not a place of not having enough. Giving up a lot of things will make your life more peaceful, happier, and surprisingly more satisfying. As a conclusion, practicing Stoicism can help you get through tough times in your life. As a Stoic, you can develop a sense of calm, knowledge, and virtue in the face of stress and hardship by following principles like simplicity, self-reliance, and awareness.
Always keep in mind that Stoicism is not about being perfect. It's about making steady progress toward a more calm and satisfying life. That being said, why not start today to learn how to be calm in stressful situations? We're going to talk about a deep truth that has been around for a long time. The power of silence. It's not enough to just not say anything. You need to use silence as a way to gain knowledge, strength and power. Discover the seven powerful benefits of learning the art of silence in the world of stoic thought with me on this life-changing trip. Silence is more than just not speaking, it's a deep statement of knowledge. Like Seneca, the Stoics knew that silence has a huge effect on how we talk to each other and make choices. It's like a mirror that shows how deep our character goes. We take time to think when we choose silence. We don't respond without thinking and we let our inner knowledge lead us. Silence has this amazing power to reveal what people are really like. This is what separates the wise from the foolish. The wise know when to be quiet, and when they are still, they show that they are smart. They know how to wait for the right time, because they know that speaking without thinking can often lead to regret. In this control, they show the world how wise they are. Stoic philosophy tells us that real knowledge isn't having a lot of words, but choosing when to speak and when to hold our lips with care. When we talk about the benefits of silence today, remember the wise words of the Stoics, which say that it is very important to know when to speak up and when to let the beauty of silence speak for itself. That being said, let's talk about seven benefits of silence. Number one, when you stay quiet, your opponent gets confused. As a Stoic, silence is not weakness. It's a smart move that can weaken your opponents and help you win. The skill of waiting for the right time. Sun Tzu, an old Chinese military planner and philosopher, had a good grasp of this idea. He often used silence as a strong weapon. When you think about strategy, Sun Tzu had deep thoughts into how important silence is for winning. He often talked about how silence and mystery can put mental pressure on your opponent, leaving them confused and guessing about your plans and actions. Sun Tzu also said that saving words not only keeps you from telling your opponent what you're going to do, but it also lets you listen and watch them more carefully. By staying calm and patient, you can give the idea that you are sure of yourself and the situation. Sun Tzu gave examples of how to use silence to make an enemy doubt his choices and actions. To make the opponent question the plan, it was common to use vagueness and instability together. In military history, this helped him win many important battles and showed how important silence is in battle and in planning. So, Sun Tzu not only had a deep understanding of Stoic philosophy, but he also knew how to use it to make good plans for life and war. In the art of war, picture yourself on a battlefield where people are waiting for you to do something, but you don't say anything. You let the stress build. Your enemies become uncomfortable in that silence and their thoughts become clouded with doubt. They are confused by the silence and wonder what you are trying to say. As Sun Tzu said, if you make your opponent unhappy with your silence, they will focus on you and your plans instead of their own goal. This old tactic, which comes from stoic ideas, shows how powerful silence can be. It makes the point that sometimes not saying anything can get more done than anything we could say. As we talk about the benefits of silence today, Keep in mind that it also has strategic value and can help you outsmart problems and enemies with skill and knowledge. The for two, get rid of things that are distracting you. Prepare ahead of time. Noise, alerts and the chaos of the world are all around us all the time. But when there is silence, we can think, plan and figure out how to move forward. It was known to the smartest people in history that silence and concentration were important. They used this power to make important choices and had a lot of success. New ideas come from having a quiet mind. 
Getting rid of distractions lets your mind wander, which can help you make links and find answers that you might not have seen through the noise. The quiet planner stays cool even when things are going crazy. They look at life as a great game and move with purpose. In a world full of information, silence helps us sort out the important from the unimportant. During these quiet times, we can tell the difference between noise and information. Being fully present and focused on the job at hand is very powerful for the quiet practitioner. This level of attention makes it easy to be productive and creative. When you do speak, what you say matters. In silence, you've looked at everything from every angle, thought about all of your options, and made a clear decision. Silence doesn't mean doing nothing, it means acting with thought and purpose. It's the breath before the jump or the pause before the big move. We find tranquility in the silence of nature. We remember how powerful simplicity and silence can be. Get rid of all distractions, enjoy the power of silence and plan ahead. These are the times when you really take charge of your life. Gautama Buddha, who was also very wise, told us to be careful with the words we use. Before we speak, he told us to think about three important questions. Is it useful? Do you need it? Will good things happen because of it? The most important thing you can do to develop inner silence is to limit your words. Stoic thought says that silence and focus go hand in hand. When our thoughts are still, things that are distracting us move away and we can concentrate better. This peace and quiet helps our minds become clear. Many people think that talking and thinking go hand in hand, but Stoic lessons show that the most powerful strength is the ability to be quiet and think before we speak. This is how we get to the power of real focus. Third, silence makes people pay attention. There is something magical about silence, especially when people are together. People who choose silence stand out like a light of peace in a world that is often noisy. Anyone ever been in a busy room where people were talking and then all of a sudden there was silence? During that pause, everyone's attention turns to the quiet person in the room without them realizing it. Imagine a classroom where the teacher is having a hard time keeping order because the students are talking non-stop during the lesson. It's hard for the teacher to get important information across because her voice is loud and competing with other people's. When the teacher stops, even for a second, the students automatically turn their attention to the teacher. What a quiet room. In this case, there are a lot of distractions in the classroom, which makes it harder to learn. While the teacher tries to give a relevant lesson, people are talking on the side, making the classroom a confusing place to learn. There is, however, a spark of hope. The brief silence that follows the teacher's pause shows that the students can recover if they are given the chance. It's a lesson that even the most disinterested students can be brought back into the learning world with good classroom management and interesting activities. This change in focus shows how powerful silence can be. When there is a lot of noise, silence stands out and gets people's attention. This makes it a powerful tool for conversation and persuasion. In line with the wisdom of Stoic philosophy, there is a surprising power in the peaceful acceptance of silence, the power to charm and charm others. Being charismatic isn't always about speaking well or making flashy moves. A lot of the time, it starts with the quiet power inside. There is something special about the quiet listener. They don't just hear words, they also pick up on the feelings and subtleties that aren't said. Kindness can also pull people together. Being kind and willing to help can win hearts without being said. The attractive boss does more than just tell people what to do. They motivate and educate those around them through what they do. Their words are strong and meaningful, and they make every word count when they do talk. Being alone isn't what silence means. It means being present. People who sit back and watch are often the life of the party. There is no way to measure the power of a sincere smile, a kind word, or a calming touch. It moves the soul without being heard. 
Remember that you can charm people with your personality, even when you're alone. Your being there and being yourself say a lot. Accept charm as a quiet art form and see how it changes your life and the lives of those around you. Fourth, being quiet makes you stronger. Stoic philosophy says that a lot of people are afraid of silence because they think it will make them feel alone or because they want to be liked by other people. Because of this fear, they are always looking for praise and approval, which weakens their inner determination. But solitude, which can be found in times of silence, is a gift that can change you. It lets us face who we really are without the masks we put on for other people. When we are still and think about ourselves, we find our inner power and realize that our worth doesn't depend on what other people say about us. Stoicism tells us to see silence as a mirror that shows us who we really are, which gives us the strength to stand tall no matter what other people do or say. The strength that comes from inside us is found in silence. Imagine that you are in high school and studying for a very important test. You've been studying hard for months, and now that the test is almost here, the stress is building. A lot of your friends are always talking about how they study, sharing notes, and looking for other people to confirm that they are really ready. They are afraid of the silence because it makes them feel alone and isolated. You, on the other hand, follow the stoic concept of using silence and privacy to think about yourself and find out more about who you are. You don't constantly look for approval from other people or compare yourself to them. Instead, you take time to think about what you know and how ready you are. When there is silence, you think about what you're really good at and realize that your worth doesn't rest on what your friends think or do. Being able to accept silence as a sign of your inner strength and self-confidence helps you stay calm and focused during the test. You believe in your own planning and find the strength to do your best even though everyone else is talking and comparing you to others all the time. This is how Stoic philosophy has given you the tools to use the changing power of silence at a key point in your academic journey. Fifth, freedom from being proud or cocky. You'll be able to let go of your heavy defense of pride and ego when you're in the beauty of silence. Real freedom doesn't come from saying how great we are but from realizing how much we are alike. Kind actions don't need praise because they're praise enough on their own. Helping other people makes them happy and being humble enough to accept when you're wrong is a strength, not a problem. It's the way to really improve yourself. Of course, the road of quiet shame isn't easy, but it leads to unity, understanding and love. Being humble is another trait of people who choose their words carefully. They're happy with being themselves and don't want to be noticed. Being humble isn't a sign of weakness if you know your place in life's big picture. People who are kind, willing to help and care about those who need it most show that they care. Being humble is what brings people together regardless of their race, class standing or views. Accept the silence that means you are humble and don't be proud or cocky. Number six. Being quiet helps when you're negotiating. Stoic philosophy says that silence can be a very useful tool in talks. It's a planned break that can lead to amazing results. When talks are at a crossroads, knowing how to keep quiet is very helpful. Take a look at a salary bargaining example. If you get an offer that isn't what you were hoping for, don't react right away. Instead, stop and be quiet. If you don't say anything, you can think about the offer and figure out the best way to react. It can also put pressure on the person bargaining, especially if they aren't sure about their deal. This could make them raise the salary or change their original offer to better meet your needs. In conclusion, stopping and staying quiet during a pay discussion can help you stay in charge and open up chances to make changes and make the process better. Number seven, Respecting others with kindness and care. Kindness, the simple but powerful act of helping someone, not because you have to, but because you want to, 
is what makes a society caring. Being kind is shown by the laughter that spreads through a group of friends, the calming embrace of a friend, and the listening ear of a friend who doesn't judge. It's the selflessness of nurses and other workers that heals more than just bodies. Schools are built on kindness, and teachers do more than just teach. They also spark students' interests and help them dream. Unknown heroes are the ones who take the time to care for our planet by picking up trash, planting trees, and speaking out for a better future. The bravery of firefighters and first responders who put their lives at risk to save people and our four-legged friends shows how kind people really are. It's in the worldwide movement for peace that millions of people raise their hands and mouths to say that love and kindness will always win over hate and violence. Giving something to someone who needs it or information to someone who wants it is an act of kindness. It means having faith that there is enough for everyone. Today, we encourage you to be kind and care about other people, to reach out and touch them, smile at them, or say something nice to them. Being thoughtful and kind are traits of people who don't speak as much. They think carefully about what they say because they know it affects other people. Let's learn more about Jane, a young woman who lives in a busy city. She has been through a lot in her life, like losing her job and her family in a terrible car crash. It looked like everything in her life was going wrong. Jane never gave up hope, though. She started working at a community center where she met people who were also having a hard time and could relate to them. Jane was always willing to listen, share and help when the chance came up. Others turned to her for support and she helped them feel less alone by letting them know that someone was always there for them. Jane met a young guy named Michael one day. Michael had been having a hard time since he lost his job. Jane told him about her own journey and how she got through hard times. They became close friends after she helped him and gave him advice. Michael not only got a new job, but also found that he was good at teaching and sharing what he knew because Jane helped him. He gave up his free time to help the community by becoming a teacher for poor kids. The story of Jane and Michael shows how to treat others with respect and care. Jane showed her kindness and love for others, and this made Michael's life better and the lives of others in the community. Because of their story, people care about and value each other more, which makes the world a better place to live. This is the journey of Tom and Emma. They've been close friends since they were kids. They always had a kind heart and were willing to help others. Emma started to feel weak and tired one day. She went to the doctor and was told she had a dangerous illness. Along with Emma, Tom chose to take this trip together. Emma found Tom to be a trustworthy friend who was always there for her, even when things were tough. Every day, he set aside time to care for Emma, making sure she ate well and feeling better. Along with that, they went to events and meetings for support groups together. On her way to getting better, Emma taught everyone about love and patience. They became stronger on the difficult journey, and they found meaning in teaching others what they had learned. Emma passed away one day after a long and brave battle with sickness. She told Tom, Thank you for always being there for me and making my life worth living. To continue their journey, Tom shared the lessons they had learned about how to love and care for others. He was a leader in helping people and families who were going through the same things. The story of Tom and Emma shows how to love and care for others. During their difficult trip, they built a strong bond and treated each other with respect and kindness. Principle 7, shown in this story, says that real friendship and loved ones make the world nicer and more important. According to Stoic philosophy, there are seven very important benefits to accepting the power of silence. Silence appears as a transformational force, capable of causing strategic doubt, improving focus, fostering trust, and bolstering inner strength. It's your turn now. 
take these classic ideas and use them to improve your life. Learn how to tell the difference between speaking and being quiet. Know when to speak and when to let the beauty of silence speak for itself. Accept the strength you have inside you. Imagine that you wake up to a mess of coffee, a misted alarm, and a flood of important emails. Imagine getting stuck in traffic after being late for a very important meeting. During these times, worry and anger can be too much to handle. It's like being on a boat being tossed around by big waves and desperately trying to stay steady. This is where Stoicism comes in. It is an old theory that is still very useful today. It's not about hiding your feelings or ignoring the troubles in your life. Instead, Stoicism gives us a way to deal with these everyday problems in a calm and clear way. We look at seven rules that will help you learn how to stop worrying and let go. Each of these rules is a shining example of Stoic knowledge that will help you find peace within yourself. These ideas, which come from Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epicurus, are more than just intellectual ideas. They are useful tools for everyday life that give us a break from the fast-paced world we live in. As we start this path, Think of this as your call to a calm waking. These principles are not only ways to find peace in your own life, they are also a way for everyone to get through life's storms with a steady hand and a calm heart. Let's start. The first rule is to know what you can control. Keeping things under control is one of the most important stoic ideas. Knowing what we can and can't change is key to learning how to stop worrying about the things we can't change. Being able to tell the difference between these two worlds is the first step to Stoicism's peace. There are two types of control, which is a simple but deep idea. It tells us that we can only control our own actions, thoughts and feelings. Other people's actions, outside events and results are mostly out of our control. The modern Stoic then learns to focus their energy only where it can make a difference and to stop worrying about things they can't change. Think about what it's like to drive to work every day in heavy traffic, the anger of constant stops and starts, and the impatience as the minutes pass. We often feel these ways because they make us feel like we can control them, but we can't. Instead, the patient traveller thinks about what they could do with this time, like listen to a podcast, do breathing exercises, or just look out the window and watch the world go by. Even though the traffic stays the same, the way you experience it changes. Using this idea to explain current worries might require a change in how we use technology. Instead of getting angry when a device breaks or an app crashes, a patient person would quietly look for a solution or do something else that doesn't involve technology. This small change in how we see things has big effects on our peace of mind. In the workplace, this concept could mean putting more effort into your work ethic, learning and professional growth instead of worrying too much about getting promoted or getting noticed. Even though what you do affects these results, you can't totally change them. Focusing on what you can change makes you more productive and likely gets you more credit for your work without the stress of worrying about what will happen. This concept isn't just about not getting frustrated though, it's also about giving people power. To understand how much control you really have over your decisions, your thoughts and your plans. It's about how to use that power to make a happy, purposeful life. Focusing on what you can change makes you an active player in your life instead of a silent observer of what happens around you. Seneca, the famous Stoic, said it best. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Many of our fears and complaints come from making up scenarios in our heads from events we've imagined but can't change. By focused on the present moment and the things we can touch, change and affect, we can let go of these weighty worries. We can apply this idea to our mental lives as well. It's easy to get angry or hurt 
after someone says something upsetting or insulting about you. Even so, these responses are choices. Stoicism tells us that we have a choice in how we react. We could choose to understand or even not care about someone's actions instead of being angry at them. This way, their actions would not affect our inner peace. If you really want to follow this stoic principle, you could do it every day by meditating or reflecting on the events of the day and figuring out what you could and could not control. As we keep doing this, it can help us feel very calm inside as we realize how little we really need to worry about and how much energy we have to focus on what really matters. The first step to stoic peace of mind is to know what you can control. It blocks out the noise of pointless worry so we can concentrate on our own actions and attitudes. When fully applied to our lives, this principle frees us and shows us how much power we have to make our own peace of mind. Second rule, enjoy the present moment. They thought of the present as life itself, not just a short stop on the way to somewhere else. One of the most important stoic practices is to focus on the present moment. This helps us not get caught up in guilt or fears about the future. This concept is about being aware, focusing on the present moment and finding meaning in things that seem ordinary. We can only control the present moment, but we often forget to enjoy it. Stoic teacher Marcus Aurelius told himself over and over that he should live each moment as if it were his last. He developed a deep respect for life and a focus that helped him deal with stress and distractions. Practicing being in the present moment can be hard in the 21st century. There are times when our phones vibrate with alerts, which takes our attention away from talking, eating and quiet times to think. We're often in one place physically, but in another place emotionally, like at the meeting tomorrow or the fight yesterday. Stoics, on the other hand, learn to silence the noise and stay present. As you eat dinner with your family, your mind is on a job that is due next week at work. As a Stoic, you would be fully present at the table, enjoying the food, contributing to the chat and making a memory. It's not about ignoring your duties, it's about making that person a priority. But how do you live in the present? It starts with being aware. You could just focus on your breath and how it feels as it comes in and out. This will help you stay in the present moment. It could also mean giving a job your full attention, like making a report or doing the dishes. Focus on one thing at a time. To follow the stoic way of life, loving the present also means not judging it. If it rains on a day you had planned to be outside, the calm way to deal with it is to see it as normal and find something good or useful in the new situation. It could be a chance to read a book, think, or have a talk you didn't plan. We are told to act with virtue and greatness, to give it our all, and to then take a step back and let things happen as they will. To be non-attached to results, you need to find a balance between doing something and accepting what happens. It's about working hard without stress, having goals without worry, and living with a purpose that doesn't get derailed by life's unexpected turns. In the end, it leads to freedom. The freedom to live fully and deeply without being held back by being too focused on success or too afraid of failing. If we follow this stoic concept, we might find that the most satisfying and rewarding things in life happen when we don't care as much about the results as we do about the quality of our deeds. This is a freeing understanding that can change how we do everything, from small tasks to big events. Fifth principle, see the value in problems. Stoicism says that problems should not just be put up with, they should be seen as chances to learn and grow. We can learn a lot from problems by facing them head on, learning from them and coming out better. It is summed up in the saying, the obstacle is the way, which was made famous by Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher. According to the idea, the things that make us tough also make us grow and build resilience. In today's world, 
Problems can come in many forms, such as a tough work project, a tense relationship, money problems, or even personal issues like getting sick or failing. Our first response might be to see these problems as things that are getting in the way of our happiness or success. But if we take a stoic view, we need to stop seeing problems as problems and start seeing them as lessons or even steps on the way to personal greatness. For example, think about the story of a young business owner whose first business fails. A non-stoic person might see this as a sign to give up, but a stoic person would look for what they could learn from the loss. What did the event teach you about the market, how to run a business, or your own limits? Focusing on these lessons will help the entrepreneur improve their approach, change their business plan, and be more ready for success in their next venture. This theory isn't about looking for problems to solve. It's about changing how we deal with the problems that life will inevitably bring our way. The Stoic doesn't ask, why is this happening to me? Instead, they ask, what can I learn from this? This change in thinking takes us from being victims to having control and power over our lives. When following this concept, it's important to remember that growth often feels painful. The discomfort of facing a tough problem or the pain of leaving our comfort zones are not signs of failure, but of growth and success. The mind and spirit need to be put to the test to get stronger, just like the body needs to be worked out to get stronger. But seeing the value in problems goes beyond helping you grow as a person. It also makes you more humble and patient. It shows us that good things don't always come quickly and that we often need to wait and keep trying until we reach our goals. The Stoics knew that life is a race, not a sprint, and that endurance, or being able to keep going even when things get hard, is a virtue. This Stoic principle also tells us to change how we think about success. Success isn't having no problems, it's being able to keep going even when things get hard. The important thing is not to have a smooth trip, but to be strong and flexible during the journey. To put this idea into practice in our daily lives, we might need to think about the problems we faced and how we solved them every night. Were we patient and creative when we talked to them? Have we been able to calm down and learn something new? Have we found a way to make a bad situation better? In a wider sense, seeing the worth in problems means accepting that life isn't perfect. People know that a well-lived life will have challenges, but that these challenges are not breaks in our journey, but important parts of it. In the end, they form who we are, test our resolve, and add to our story in ways that easy wins could never. If you follow this rule, you will be open to all the different parts of life. It is important to know that the biggest successes are often accompanied by the biggest problems. The key is to keep going forward, not in spite of the problems, but because of them. In this way, we not only get through the hard times, but we also learn from them and become stronger and smarter. Rule 6. Look for ways to grow when things go wrong. Stoicism teaches that problems are not only a part of life, but also a chance to grow as a person. When we face problems, the Stoics thought, we can grow our greatest qualities. As Seneca, one of the most famous Stoic philosophers said, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. This principle tells us to find strength in hardship and let it make us stronger and smarter. Having trouble can come in many forms, such as the constant stress of a hard job, the pain of a personal loss, or the anger of not being able to reach a goal. For a Stoic, these are not just bad things that have to be dealt with. They are chances to practice traits like courage, patience, and endurance. Think about the difficulties a professional faces when working in a very competitive and cutthroat environment. The stress and pressure could make them give up, or they could help them build resilience, learn to keep their integrity when others might break it, and find peace within themselves amidst the chaos. To grow in hard times, we also need to change how we think about what it means to face problems. 
It doesn't matter if we face problems or not. What matters is how we handle them. Every task is a question, and the way our heroes answer it is the answer. This stoic concept tells us to think about how to react in a way that helps us grow and learn. In real life, changing the way you talk to yourself can help you grow when things are hard. When we're going through a tough time, we might not ask, why is this happening to me? But what can this teach me? Or how can I use this experience to become better? This shifts our focus from passively suffering to actively seeking virtue. Accepting this theory also means accepting that failure is a part of success, not the opposite of it. Every mistake gives us a chance to do better next time if we are willing to look for it. The Stoics didn't fear failing. They saw it as an important step on the way to becoming wise. This concept is more important than ever in our fast-paced world where bad things can seem to happen all the time. Entrepreneurs who use what they've learned from a bad business to make something new and better show this trait. It is clear when an athlete comes back to training with more focus and drive after losing. It's in everyone who decides to see life's problems not as problems to be solved, but as ways to learn and get better. It's not enough to just get through hard times. You need to thrive because of them in order to grow. To build a life story that values resilience and the ability to change and get through tough times. It's about realizing that hard times don't make us who we are, they make us better. To live by this concept, we could keep a book where we write down and think about the problems we face and the lessons we learn from them. As we know that growth often comes from being uncomfortable, we can set goals for ourselves that push us out of our comfort zones. There are many stories and cases of people who have changed their problems into strengths and we can learn from their experiences. In the end, finding growth in hardship means using the natural power of life's problems to help you grow as a person. This idea doesn't make pain less real. Instead, it gives us the power to find meaning and strength in it. By following this stoic lesson, we can not only handle life's storms with ease, but also with a spirit that gets stronger with each one that passes. Seventh principle, grow your personal wealth. For the Stoics, inner wealth was very important. This is the kind of treasure that neither moth nor rust can ruin. They thought that developing qualities like self-discipline, courage, knowledge and fairness were important for living a good life. Seneca was one of many people who said that having few wants is more important than having many things. This principle tells us to think about what's important to us and invest in the kind of wealth that makes our lives better from the inside out. It's easy to get caught up in the allure of money and success in the outside world these days. Advertisements, social media and cultural stories often say that having things and being popular will make you happy. But the stoic principle tells us that success in the outside world can make us happy for a short time but it doesn't mean we'll be happy in the long run. Internal virtues, the ones that make us who we are and guide our actions, are what give us real, long-lasting happiness. Imagine the story of a person who has achieved a lot of financial success, but still feels empty and unsatisfied. Then, they might start a path of self-discovery and learn to enjoy the easy things in life, like the fun of learning, the happiness of helping others, and the peace that comes from accepting themselves. They learn through this process that their worth is not based on how much money they have, but on how rich their character is and how good their relationships are. Developing inner wealth means being thankful for what we have instead of focusing on what we don't have or what other people do. Realizing how lucky we are and finding happiness in the present is what it's all about. When we are grateful, we stop thinking about what we don't have and start thinking about what we do have. Being able to rely on yourself is also important for this concept. The Stoics thought that depending on outside events to make us happy was a dangerous way to live. Instead, 
They told people to be happy with themselves, no matter what was going on in the outside world. We depend less on the outside world for our well-being when we build inner power and resilience. To practice developing inner wealth, we might think about what we're grateful for every day. It could mean being generous not only with money, but also with time, energy and understanding. It could mean setting aside time to do things that help you grow as a person, like reading, relaxing or having deep talks. This concept also tells us that the best way to measure success is not by how many things we've done for other people, but by how much we've grown as individuals. Can we wait a little longer than we did last year? Do we handle our anger better? Have our ability to understand and care for others grown? These are what a Stoic thinks success looks like. This principle helps us separate from the never-ending chase of more, a bigger house, a newer car, a better paying job, and instead find satisfaction in personal virtue and the easy pleasures of life. Building a life that feels rich on the inside is more important than making sure it looks rich to other people. We might need to change what rich means to us before we can apply this idea to our lives. We can make habits that are good for our souls, like writing in a book, helping others, or spending time in nature. To remember ourselves that we can be happy with less, we can also give up some of our favorite things every once in a while. When you live your life according to Stoic values, you gain inner riches, which you should recognize and value. It's about finding happiness that isn't tied to the constantly changing outside world, but to the fixed things in our own lives and the choices we make. By focusing on these inner riches, we can learn to stop worrying about what other people think and stop looking for more. This will help us live a truly happy and peaceful life. Finally, accepting Stoicism in the present day. As we go through these seven Stoic principles, it becomes clear that this old theory can still help us in our modern lives. Stoicism is not an old set of ideas. Instead, it gives us useful tools for dealing with the difficulties and problems we face in today's world. We can develop inner peace, resilience, and a deep sense of satisfaction that isn't affected by what's going on around us by following these rules. The first step on the Stoic path is to figure out what we can control and let go of what we can't. Setting the stage for a life lived with purpose and focus starts with this basic idea. We learn to value life's passing beauty and get more out of our situations when we live in the present. When we accept that change is going to happen, we can flow with life's natural rhythms, which makes resistance and pain less likely. Being non-attached to results frees us from the chains of expectations and lets us find joy and worth in the trip itself. By seeing the value in problems, we can turn them into chances to grow, which makes us stronger and smarter through hardship. When we look for growth in tough situations, we strengthen our resilience and learn that every loss can help us move forward. On top of that, Developing inner riches changes our focus from seeking approval from others and material wealth to finding permanent happiness in personal virtue and deep relationships. We start to see changes in our lives as we adhere to these ideals. We become more flexible, rooted and in touch with ourselves. In the middle of all the chaos, we find peace and a clear sense of purpose that helps us make choices and act. As we pay more attention and understand others, our relationships get stronger. We build resilience that lets us handle the tough things in life with style and courage. To sum up, Stoicism is more than just a theory. It's also a way to live a good life. It shows us how to stop worrying about things that aren't important or that won't last, and how to stop trying to control things that are out of our control. Instead, it helps us focus on what really matters, what we do, how we react, and who we are as a person. We discover that the way to tranquility and happiness is not in external accomplishments or belongings, 
but rather in our attitudes, choices, and internal growth as we adopt these stoic principles. Getting away from the world is not the point of this trip. The point is to interact with it more fully, carefully, and with a deep love for the present moment. Stoicism is a light of clarity and simplicity in a world that is often ruled by wealth and constant distractions. Taking on its lessons will help us handle life's challenges with steadiness and peace of mind. We learn to value the variety of our situations, the difficulties we face, and the strength of our bonds with each other. Stoicism takes us not only to a life of endurance, but also to a life with deep meaning and purpose. Being a slave to the fantasies of what was or what might be is to give up control of the present. So if you want to be a Stoic, stop thinking about the past and stop worrying about the future. Additionally, as a Stoic, you should know that the mind is a strong instrument that can turn thoughts into facts, change how we see things and control our feelings. It's too dangerous to let loose, so you need to control it and use it to your advantage. As you seek virtue, let it be your friend and your guide through the moment. Stop worrying about the past and start living right away. Epicurus said, if someone tried to take control of your body and make you a slave, you would fight for freedom. But how easily you give your mind to someone who insults you when you dwell on their words and let them dominate your thoughts you make them your master. Unfortunately, we don't always get rid of insults. We let damaging comments take up space in our minds. Stoics believed that the mind was like a fortress that words from strangers could not easily break through. To fight this, they focused on mental toughness, knowing that the real war was against how they responded to these insults. Try managing the rough waters of life with the calm of a seasoned captain. Imagine facing the ups and downs of life with calm and clarity, without being shaken or shaky. Few people are lucky enough to have this advantage. You can learn how to do it. Intro to the world of Stoicism, an old theory that can change your life by giving you the power to control your mind and, by extension, your life. Stoicism isn't just about surviving difficulties, it's about living in them, using each difficulty as a springboard to greater self-development and inner tranquility. In this course, we will explore the ancient knowledge of Stoic thinkers such as Marcus Aurelius and learn how to use the mind's power to build a life of tranquility, resilience and satisfaction. Follow the Stoic way to become more calm, in control and happy. Learn how to control your mind through the art of Stoicism right now in the busy rhythm of modern life where every day brings new challenges and chances. The timeless advice of Stoicism is wise. Roman philosopher and ruler Aelius taught a deep lesson that has stood the test of time. How we see the world affects how we experience it. These lessons are not just intellectual thoughts. They are also useful tools for dealing with the difficulties of life. Is what supports the Stoic belief in the mind's power and the ability to find inner peace no matter what is going on around you. Lesson 1. How powerful perception is. The famous philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This strong idea is what our journey is based on. It says that changing our inner world is more important than changing the outside world if we want to be satisfied and strong in the long term. Reality is shaped by how we see things or how we perceive them. By actively picking how we see things, we can handle the ups and downs of life with calm and ease. Keeping a reflecting diary is a useful practical practice. Write down what you're thinking and feeling right now every morning. Note any bad thoughts you have throughout the day and work to change them into neutral or positive ones. Thoughtfully consider how this changes, how you feel about things. You can challenge a bad opinion about a situation that keeps happening by finding evidence that goes against it. 
If you think you always do a bad job in meetings, for example, think of a time when you provided good input. Rational thinking is a driving concept. Rational thinking is a big part of Aurelius's lessons. He believed that reason was the key to figuring out what we could do and what beyond our power. Knowing how to use our energy wisely depends on this insight. Knowing and accepting what we can't change lets us focus on things we can actually change. Philosophy teaches us to think and live rationally, seeing problems as chances to learn and grow. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius suggested a bold new way to look at problems. The thing that stops you from acting makes you act. What is in the way becomes the way. In this way of thinking, problems are not seen as hurdles but as ways to grow and develop. It is urged that when we face problems, we should not give up and instead find strength and resilience. This lesson teaches us to turn difficulties into opportunities to develop traits like patience, control, and resilience. The here and now and death. Exploring death is another important part of Aurelius's thought. Rather than being a disturbing interest, thinking about death can help you enjoy the present time. Allow that to control what you do, say, and think right now. Understanding how short life is forces us to fully experience the present to value every moment and to give our actions meaning and purpose. In addition to encouraging philosophical living, it also encourages meaningful living, making the most of the time we have and building self-reflection and inner power. Individuals like Alias pushed for daily self-reflection. Understanding our reasons for doing things, our role in the world and our place in it are all addressed in this practice. It is a journey within, seeking knowledge and self-improvement. Focusing on ourselves helps us create an inner castle, a mental fortress where we can go when things get crazy around us. Living a good life, guided by virtues like knowledge, fairness, courage and moderation, depends on having this inner power. It's not just historical knowledge that Marcus Aurelius's lesson on perception offers, it's also a useful context for personal growth and inner peace. Such a strong example of Stoic theory and how it still applies to our modern world. Mastering our views, accepting logic, facing obstacles, appreciating the moment and building inner strength can help us handle life's unknowns with confidence and purpose. We respect Aurelius's memory and the deep insights of Stoicism as we incorporate these lessons into our daily lives, finding strength and tranquility in the fortress of our minds. 2. The Stoic Habit of Being Logical and in Charge Stoicism, which was taught by Marcus Aurelius, is the basis for the second deep lesson, which is the practice of reason and the understanding of control. Crucial to Stoic thought, this lesson helps us figure out what parts of life we can manage and what parts we can't, inspiring us to carefully spend our energy and focus on our own strength instead of what's going on around us. That alias strongly supported. Rational decision-making is a relevant practical practice. Listing the pros and cons will help you make a choice. Consider which option makes the most sense based on logic rather than feeling. Make this your daily habit by using it for small choices. Think about what you can control and what you can't control when you're feeling stressed. Release worries that you can't change and focus on things you can do. Rational thinking is what Stoicism is all about. Fundamental to this lesson is the Stoic stress on being logical. Stoicism stresses the importance of using our minds to find our way through the rough seas of life as a result of being able to tell the difference between good, bad, and neutral, rational thinking helps us focus on what really counts. This practice isn't about hiding your feelings, it's about how to understand and control them using logic. It's an invitation to live a life where choices, actions, and views are based on careful thinking instead of immediate responses. Acceptance 
and control. Figuring out what we can control and what we can't is a central idea of Stoicism. Our attitude to life's problems depends on how well we can tell the difference. According to Alias, we should put most of our efforts into controlling our ideas, actions, and emotions. In contrast, we are told to learn to accept the things we can't change, like other people's acts, the past, and some parts of our future. Reasonable Responses to Problems Marcus Aurelius said that handling problems logically changes our lives. People tell us to take a calm and collected stance when we face problems, rather than getting angry or depressed. In addition to saving our mental energy, this point of view lets us learn and come up with new ideas. Not an impossible obstacle, but a question to be answered rationally and a problem to be solved carefully. Rethinking the power of perception. Connecting to the first lesson, the ability to perceive plays a big part in this practice of being logical and in charge. My thoughts and feelings, after being sifted by logic, decide how I respond to things going on around me. Adhering to stoic thought means deciding to see problems as chances to grow. We are able to keep tranquility. In the midst of chaos, thanks to this mindful choice of perception guided by reason, regularly using logic and reason, practically applying this lesson to our everyday lives requires regular mental exercises. Regularly looking at our thoughts, asking our natural responses, and making sure our actions are in line with our core values are all parts of this. It requires us to commit to daily self-reflection so that we don't make choices based on feeling or speed, but on careful, logical speculation. We can face life's risks with peace and confidence thanks to this practice's support of inner resilience. Rational thinking and knowing what you can control are important stoic practices that teach us a lot about how to master ourselves. Using our thoughts to tell the difference between things we can control and things we can't teaches us to look at life with a calm and logical mind. Adopting this knowledge into our daily lives makes us more able to handle any situation, reflecting the strength and peace that are at the heart of stoic thought. As a proof to how timeless Marcus Aurelius's teachings are, this lesson is not just about weathering life's storms, but also about doing so with a steady hand and a clear mind. Lesson 3. Mastering your thoughts and finding inner peace. Lesson 3 goes into more depth about Stoic theory by focusing on an important part of Stoicism as taught by Marcus Aurelius, how to calm your mind to find inner peace. Truthful peace doesn't come from outside conditions, it comes from inside. It examines how we can use the stoic idea of the mind's great power to create a life of tranquility and resilience. How powerful the mind is. According to this theory, our inner world is the key to our mental and emotional health. Marcus Aurelius had deep insights that taught us that what causes the chaos in our lives is not outside events, but how we respond to them. This understanding gives us the power to manage our emotions. We can keep tranquility despite the chaos around us by controlling our thoughts and feelings. Rational thinking and feelings. As opposed to urging people to hide their feelings, Stoicism encourages them to understand them and handle them logically. They don't see emotions as enemies, but as signs. These signs need to be understood using reasoning and reason. Therefore, we can handle emotional situations with clarity and knowledge, avoiding hasty responses that we might later regret. Present moment, awareness and mindfulness. Stoic principles say that practicing attention and being aware of the present moment is a key part of managing the mind. Mindfulness means focused on the present moment and accepting our thoughts and feelings without judging them. By focusing on the present, Aurelius said, we can forget about the worries of the future and the regrets of the past and find happiness in the here and now.
personal growth and self-reflection. Regular self-reflection is another important routine for learning mind control. This process includes checking to see if our actions, thoughts and motives are in line with our core beliefs and principles. Individual self-reflection helps us discover areas for personal growth and create plans to strengthen our mental toughness. Daily chances to become better versions of ourselves are part of this journey of continuous self-improvement. Constructing the Inner Fortress The Roman philosopher Marcus Aurelius talked a lot about the inner citadel, which is a stronghold inside each of us. To construct this inner fortress, one must develop traits such as knowledge, courage and moderation. It involves establishing a mental environment in which tranquility rules, regardless of the outward situations. This inner fortress gives us strength and stability, allowing us to handle life's trials with serenity and style. Practical exercise, breathing with awareness. Focus on your breath for a few minutes when you're feeling stressed. Spend this time separating yourself from your crazy thoughts and calming down. Practice saying, I choose not to let this control me. When you're in a stressful situation, remember that you can choose how to respond. Stoic philosophy's third lesson on mental control is a strong way to find inner peace. We can achieve a state of mental peace and resilience by using reason to understand and control our feelings, practicing awareness, doing regular self-reflection and strengthening our inner fortress. Today's lesson shows us that true peace doesn't come from outside sources, but from how we handle our inner world. Using these habits in our daily lives helps us live the stoic ideal of a life well lived with mental and emotional power. Fourth lesson, learning how to react to things happening around you. In this fourth lesson, we continue our study of stoic thought by learning how to control how we react to things that happen around us. A central idea in Stoic thought, this lesson comes from Marcus Aurelius's beliefs. Although we can't always change what happens to us, we have complete control over how we react. Maintaining emotional balance and living a life of peace and resilience depend on this idea. Insight into the two types of power. Fundamental to this lesson is the stoic idea of the division of control, which tells us what we can control and what we can't. In their writings, Marcus Aelius and other stoic thinkers stressed how important it is to focus on our own actions and attitudes, which we can control instead of random events that happen to us. We can avoid needless anger and focus our efforts more effectively when we understand this. Reframing how we think about problems. Reframe our view of obstacles is an important part of being able to respond well to outside events. Stoicism teaches us to see problems not as problems that need to be solved, but as chances to improve ourselves and put virtue into practice. As a result of this change in viewpoint, we can deal with problems in a more productive way and with a clear head. Stoicism and Emotional Intelligence Empowering our emotional intelligence is important for controlling our reactions. Figuring this out means noticing our emotional responses, figuring out where they come from, and then acting in a way that makes sense to our logical thought. This helps us make choices that are in line with our morals and long-term goals by keeping our feelings in check. Using Mindful Reactions as a practical matter, practicing awareness can help us deal with outside events better. Focusing on the present moment teaches us to wait before responding, which lets us choose how to behave instead of letting our automatic responses guide us. According to Stoic philosophy, this pause is a strong tool that helps us react with knowledge and calmness. Gaining knowledge from problems Stoicism instructs us to view hardship as a teacher. Dealing with tough people or situations is a chance to practice qualities like courage, patience and understanding. 
By keeping this attitude in mind, we can turn our bad situations into useful lessons that help us grow as people and make our character stronger. As a practical practice, try the stoic pause. Wait 10 seconds before reacting when you have a strong emotional reaction. Consider a calm and logical response during this time. Take a moment to think about whether the advice is helpful before you respond negatively. Give a careful answer, focused on learning over responding. For a healthy and satisfying life, lesson four of the Stoic theory on how to control how you react to outside events is very helpful. It shows us that even though we can't change everything that happens to us, we can determine how we react to it. We can manage life's risks with ease and resilience by knowing the split of power, changing how we think about problems, increasing our emotional intelligence, practicing mindful reactions, and learning from mistakes. This lesson teaches us how to live in balance with the world around us, keeping a calm mind as life goes up and down. Learning Lesson 5 Becoming stronger by accepting what is happens is called resilience. The growth of resilience through acceptance is the focus of Lesson 5 of Stoic philosophy, which we are currently exploring. Based on the ideas of Marcus Aelius and other Stoics, this lesson looks at the idea of accepting what we can't change and using that acceptance to build mental power and resilience. How Stoics See Acceptance Stoicism teaches that much of our suffering is caused by our reaction to external events, not by them themselves. Including Aurelius, the Stoics believed that we should completely accept whatever life throws at us. Not a passive resignation, but an active acceptance that recognizes what is happening and then works within those limits. Control versus acceptance, a contrast. After talking about the dichotomy of control earlier, this lesson stresses that our power comes from how we respond to things, not from the things themselves. Although we can't change everything that happens around us, we can change how we react to it. Understanding this is freeing and the foundation of stoic resilience. Coping with problems and staying strong. Dealing with problems while keeping your cool is at the heart of Stoic resilience. Stoicism encourages facing problems head-on with a clear and reasonable mind, not avoiding or ignoring them. We become more flexible and strong this way, ready to handle life's natural obstacles. Mindful acceptance is a skill. Acceptance is easier to do when we practice awareness every day. Being mindful means paying attention to our thoughts and feelings without judging them and accepting them as they are. Giving up or feeling beaten is not what this acceptance means. It means understanding our current situation and moving from there. Understanding things from nature and the world. Stoicism also instructs us to use nature and the cosmos as examples of acceptance. Beings in nature don't fight against the seasons or the weather. They change and survive. A similar message tells us to accept the natural flow of life and know that change and passing away are part of being alive. Practical exercise. Say daily statements of acceptance. Discover one thing you can't change every morning and formally accept it. Maybe all that's needed is to appreciate the weather. Accepting bigger, uncontrolled things that happen in life gets easier with this practice. Recognize a failure as part of your trip instead of focusing on how frustrating it is. Thoughtfully consider what it teaches you about sticking with something or being able to change. Mind and feeling strength can be learned from Stoic philosophy's fifth lesson on building resilience through acceptance. Understanding and practicing the Stoic practice of acceptance helps us deal with life's unknowns, not with fear and struggle, but with strength and adaptability. With this strategy, we can increase our resilience, deal with change, and come out of tough times with a better understanding and respect of life. To truly represent Stoic resilience, we must develop an attitude that is not easily shaken by the ups and downs of life. 
Developing mental flexibility with Stoicism is the sixth lesson. We are learning more about Stoic theory. In lesson six, we will focus on developing emotional agility as a way to regulate our thoughts. Marcus Aurelius and other Stoic thinkers taught this idea, which is about learning to control our feelings well so that we can handle life's ups and downs with resilience and knowledge. Gaining mental agility. In Stoicism, emotional agility means being able to fully feel our emotions while still being able to think and act logically. Realizing and understanding our feelings without letting them take over or control us is part of it. Face the difficulties of life with focus and balance by learning this skill. How logic affects our mental lives. Thinking logically is an important part of controlling your feelings according to Stoic concepts. Although Marcus Aurelius and other Stoics believed that feelings are normal, they taught that we should use our logical mind to decide how to react to them. This doesn't mean hiding or ignoring your feelings. It means looking at them with clear thinking and knowledge, mindfulness and self-awareness practices. Stoicism suggests practicing attention and self-awareness on a daily basis to enhance mental flexibility. Mindfulness means paying attention to our feelings as they come up, figuring out what makes them happen and realizing that they will go away soon. By understanding our emotional patterns better, we can deal with them in ways that are in line with our goals and values. Combining logical and emotional reactions. Being emotionally agile means being able to balance your emotions and logical reactions. Embracing our feelings fully while using our logical mind to figure out the best thing to do at the same time. Understanding and using reasoning are both important in dealing with difficult scenarios. Gaining knowledge from our feelings. Stoicism teaches us that our feelings can teach us important lessons. Understanding ourselves and our values is possible by thinking about how we feel and what happens as a result. Greater mental resilience and well-being result from our increased self-awareness, which allows us to make more deliberate decisions going forward. As a practical practice, try the stoic pause. Wait 10 seconds before reacting when you have a strong emotional reaction. Consider a calm and logical response during this time. Take a moment to think about whether the advice is helpful before you respond negatively. Give a careful answer, focused on learning over responding. Mind control is made easier with Stoic philosophy's sixth lesson on developing emotional quickness. We can react to the problems of life with resilience and understanding by learning to control our feelings. By learning this lesson, we can improve our emotional intelligence and live a more useful and satisfying life. The true core of Stoic thought is to develop a strong but flexible mind through practices like mindfulness, self-awareness and calm emotional reactions. Furthermore, Stoic thought offers timeless advice on how to control the mind and find inner peace. Understanding how perception works, being logical, controlling how we react to outside events, building resilience through acceptance and improving our mental flexibility can help us handle life's problems with grace and knowledge. These lessons give us the ability to master our thoughts, which results in a life of tranquility, resilience and satisfaction. People who follow Stoic principles respect the memory of Marcus Aurelius and the deep insights of Stoic philosophy by making the fortress of their minds their stronghold of peace and strength. Stoicism advises us to see every emotional upsetting event as a chance for growth and learning. Understanding the causes of our emotional reactions can help us understand our inner values and beliefs. Through this process of learning and reflecting, we become more emotionally intelligent over time. Practical exercise, labeling emotions, Whatever strong mood you're feeling, name it. If you say, I'm feeling anxious, then think about why you feel that way and how you can deal with it in a sensible way. 
Take time to fully experience and enjoy the feeling of happiness when it happens. Thoughtfully consider what this good feeling teaches you about your values and goals. Sixth lesson on developing emotional agility through stoicism is helpful for keeping your mind in check and living a healthy life. We prepare ourselves to handle the ups and downs of life with ease and resilience by developing the capacity to control our feelings with reason and awareness. Stoic philosophy teaches us that emotional agility is not about controlling our feelings, but about dealing with them in a thoughtful and helpful way. Knowing how to handle our feelings in a wise and graceful way makes us more flexible, understanding and useful in both our personal and work lives. Lesson 7. Improving your mental balance by developing calm distance. Within our study of Stoic philosophy, Lesson 7 focuses on the practice of Stoic separation as a way to manage one's thoughts. To keep your mind in balance, this lesson, which is based on the ideas of Marcus Aurelius and other Stoic thinkers, stresses how important it is to become detached from both positive and negative events and feelings. Stoic detachment is about keeping an objective distance from things we can't change, not about indifference or a lack of concern. Having this awareness means realizing that our happiness and peace of mind shouldn't rest on other people or how our feelings change. Detachment from events separates us from them and lets us deal with life's challenges calmly and clearly. To practice Stoic detachment, we need to learn to separate our inner selves from the things happening around us. Separation helps us understand that outside events can have an effect on us, but they don't make us who we are or limit our ability to be happy. We have more control over our behaviors and thoughts when we internalize this. Practicing awareness is a key part of developing calm distance. Simply noticing our thoughts and feelings as they are without getting caught up in them is what mindfulness teaches us. Maintaining a detached, analytical stance helps us feel our feelings without being overcome by them, which keeps our mental balance. Surrendering to change. Stoic philosophy teaches us to accept that life and all of its situations are temporary. When we accept that change is the only thing that stays the same, we learn to let go of our desire for things to stay the same beyond our control. Accepting that life is temporary and finding peace in the present moment are both helped by this knowledge. How to make better decisions. Gaining a sense of separation can help you make better, more organized choices. Being emotionally or highly tied to the result of a situation makes it harder to see things more clearly and make decisions that are in line with our values and long-term goals. Exercise. Detachment thought. Identify something that usually makes you angry. Thoughtfully consider why it bothers you and practice looking at it without any feelings attached. Remember your area of influence when you're watching the news and feeling stressed by what's going on in the world. Focus your energy there. Achieving separation from fears about the world. Focusing on Lesson 7's topic of Stoic separation is a key part of controlling your thoughts and achieving mental balance. Learning to keep a healthy distance from things we can't change and to be aware of our feelings without letting them rule us is what it teaches us. Staying detached isn't a way to escape reality. It's a smart way to live a healthy and satisfying life making choices that are in line with our inner knowledge and stoic beliefs helps us deal with the complicated things in life sunday's lesson is about the stoic practice of thoughtful reflection for the eighth lesson in our series on stoic thought we'll be looking at reflective meditation as a way to keep your mind in check drawing on the ideas of marcus aurelius and other stoic philosophers this lesson shows how important it is to think about and reflect on your own thoughts in order to attain mental clarity and self-mastery. According to Stoicism, mindful meditation means looking deeply and carefully at your ideas, 
actions and experiences. Instead of focusing on cleaning your mind like some other types of meditation do, stoic reflection. Meditation pushes you to be more involved with your inner thoughts and feelings by thinking about them through the criteria of stoicism. Examining oneself is an important part of this exercise. Thinking about whether our actions and thoughts are in line with stoic values like knowledge, justice, courage and temperance on a daily basis is part of this practice. We can find ways to improve ourselves and live a more focused and good life by reflecting on our recent experiences. In addition to reflective meditation, one way to improve our present moment awareness is to practice mindfulness. Although we are fully present and aware, we can still notice our thoughts and feelings without being carried away by them. In tough times, this technique helps us stay calm and balanced. Learning from daily experiences. One important part of mindful meditation is using our daily experiences to inform our thinking. Everyday exchanges, problems, and even boring tasks can teach us a lot about ourselves and how we react to the world around us. Continual learning is important for growing as a person and becoming emotionally mature. Incorporating Stoic Wisdom Using Stoic Wisdom in thoughtful meditation makes the exercise better. Considering the lessons of Stoic thinkers like Marcus Aurelius helps us organize our thoughts. It helps us find ways to use Stoic ideas in our everyday lives and compares our actions and thoughts to their concepts. Practice. Quiet thought in the evening. Consider your day for 10 minutes every night. Think about how, or if, the Stoic principles affected your actions and thoughts and make plans for the next day to make things better. Focus on keeping your inner peace and thinking logically as you imagine a difficult situation and practice how you might use Stoic principles in that setting. Lesson 8. Reflective meditation, a practice of the Stoics, is a strong way to calm the mind and help with personal growth. Focusing on this practice helps us connect deeply with our inner selves, look at our lives through stern lenses and learn from our mistakes. Following the lessons of Stoic philosophy, we can learn more about ourselves, make better decisions and live a more mindful and good life by regularly practicing thoughtful meditation. 9. Accepting Amor Fati, which means liking one's fate. Roman Stoic philosophy is still being studied, and Lesson 9 is all about the idea of amor fati, which means love of fate, or love of one's fate. This Stoic principle, first stressed by Marcus Aurelius and then taken up by Friedrich Nietzsche and made even more complete, teaches us to accept everything that happens in life, good or bad, with love. Truth behind amor fati Liking and accepting everything that life brings us is what Amor Fati is all about, not just accepting what happens, realizing that everything that happens, even things that seem bad, is an important part of the fabric of our lives. Imagine that every event and moment is a chance to learn and grow. Beyond just giving up, it's important to tell the difference between Amor Fati and silent acceptance. Being resigned means feeling powerless or defeated, while Amor Fati means loving and being excited about life in all its forms. This way of thinking supports the idea of finding the good in every situation, delight and meaning in whatever comes your way, and not letting life's ups and downs victimize you. Combining Amor Fati with Daily Life To combine Amor Fati with daily life, we must first change the way we think about problems and difficulties. We don't have to see them as problems. Instead, we can see them as integral parts of our journey through life, picked by the world to assist our growth. As a result of this change in mood, we are able to view these events in a more positive and helpful way. Understanding the importance of mindfulness and gratitude being aware and being thankful are important parts of practicing Amor Fati. 
Mindfulness helps us fully experience and enjoy the present moment. And thanks helps us see the worth and meaning in everything that happens to us. By developing these attitudes, we can make it easier to love our fate, no matter what it brings. A brave and positive outlook on life. Accepting Amor Fati needs a certain amount of bravery and confidence. Living a brave life and believing that everything happens for our own good are two things that are important. We can live a fuller life without fear of the unknown or resistance to change when we take this view of life seriously. Accepting Amor Fati, love of oneself, is a central idea in Stoic thought and a difficult thing to do. Our fate lets us accept and value all of life's events, using them to make us better people and happier. This Stoic practice teaches us to face life with joy, resilience and a deep sense of satisfaction, finding peace with its course, no matter what it may be. Practical Exercise Writing in a Gratitude Notebook Every day, write down one difficult event and reflect on what you can learn or how it made you feel. As a result, you learn to love whatever occurs. Focus on the good things that come from a tough time in your life, like losing your job. For example, you might have time to improve yourself or look into new work routes. Embracing the love of one's fate. Lesson 10. For inner tranquility, practice quiet neutrality. We look at the idea of stoic neutrality in the last lesson of our series on Stoic philosophy, which is a crucial skill for controlling your mind and finding inner tranquility. For Marcus Aurelius and other Stoic thinkers, this idea means becoming apathetic toward things we can't change. Understanding Stoic indifference. Stoic indifference means keeping your cool and being balanced no matter what might happen. Learning to tell the difference between what counts and what doesn't, and between what we can manage and what we can't. Stoics tell us that we should carefully consider our character and deeds, but not care about things that are out of our control. The Stoic dichotomy of control revisited. This idea brings up the paradox of control again. Individuals tell us to use our mental power wisely and concentrate only on things we can alter or affect. Whatever else, we show apathy. We don't deny that these things are happening, but we also don't let them stir up our inner peace. Rational reaction and emotional balance. Stoic neutrality also means keeping our emotions in check by not getting too excited or upset about good or bad things that happen. We can look at every situation calmly and logically and react. For making smart choices and living a life in line with Stoic ideals, we need to be emotionally calm. Real life applications. Using Stoic neutrality in real life means being aware of how we respond to events happening around us. It includes asking ourselves if our emotional reaction is reasonable and if we can change the situation. We focus our energy on our actions and attitudes and gently guide ourselves back to a state of calm disinterest if it's not. Improving your resilience through indifference. Improving your resilience is one of the most important benefits of doing stoic indifference. By not letting every turn of events affect us, we strengthen our minds and characters. Our ability to maintain our calm and strength in the face of adversity is a direct result of our resilience. Actual practice, showing indifference in movement. Focus on reminding yourself that a small problem, like a long line, is not that important in the big picture and practice staying calm and unbothered. As an alternative to being upset when a planned activity is cancelled, Consider using the time to think on your own life or pursue a personal interest. Displaying disregard toward altered plans. Controlling the thought and finding inner tranquility depend on Lesson 10, which teaches how to practice Stoic neutrality. Thinking about our deeds, choices and character is what really counts, while keeping a calm attitude about things we can't change teaches us this practice. 
Accepting stoic indifference helps us handle life's unknowns with poise and grace, keeping our inner peace even as outside situations change all the time. When we're done learning about stoicism, remember that the fortress of your own mind is where you have the power to change your reality. You now have the old but evergreen tools of stoic knowledge, each of which is a key to increased mental toughness, tranquility, and resilience. This message will help you as you move through the changing waves of life. Beware of the weather, because you are now in charge of your own mind and can easily navigate the vast ocean of life. Consider every day a chance to put these ideas into practice and build a life with meaning, balance, and inner peace. Do not forget what Marcus Aurelius said. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. We appreciate you being a part of this life-changing journey, wishing you a life full of peace and happiness on the calm path. Maintain power over your mind and make it your best friend in the quest for a fulfilled life. We are told that being kind should come before our own needs and that we should give and share. But does anyone tell us what can go wrong if we are too kind and caring? The world we live in is full of helpful people who see how their mindless giving drains them of their money and energy. Could being too kind put our own lives in danger? You'll be surprised at how being kind can make things worse for you. Now it's time to talk about the nine bad things that happen to you because you are too good, along with six stoic ways to keep people from taking advantage of you. Let's move on without further ado. Number one, you will expect too much from other people. To be happy, the Stoics say, we should accept things as they are and not base our happiness on what other people do. You can escape sadness and develop emotional distance by giving without asking too much in return. This will give you more peace of mind. We can't always be selfless when we give. When we give our all, we expect others to do the same, whether we're aware of it or not. On the other hand, when we need something important, people will assume that you can handle everything, especially your own life, because they're so used to having everything done for them. If not, why would you take on other people's duties? However, what will actually happen is that the return you were hoping for will not happen. Instead, you will feel bad, tired, frustrated, and let down. Still, if we look at it objectively, people aren't failing you. They're just doing what you should do, which is taking care of their own tasks. Two, people will only want something from you. Stoics say that it's important to remember that acting in line with virtue and reason, not just what other people want, is what gives you real value. Becoming more moderate and helpful in a balanced way will help you stay in charge of your actions and avoid bad habits that hurt your mental health. People are creatures of habit, which is something you've heard your whole life. People are built to get used to a pattern, a way of life, and a lot of different things going on around them. This desire to fit in is where the idea of a comfort zone comes from. If you give everything you have all the time, the people you help will expect you to give them something all the time. This will put people in their comfort zones and they won't do many of their duties because you'll be there to do them. Not respecting yourself will be your problem in this case, because no one will likely look you in the eyes and tell you to think more about yourself if you don't. You shouldn't expect people you help to show this kind of compassion because they would stick to their own Robin Hood, which would cost them their lives. Third, there is a good chance that you will be called weak and treated like one. The Stoic theory tells us to become more self-disciplined and strong on the inside. We can show others that we are committed to our own duties and values by setting clear limits and being self-disciplined. Instead of being seen as weak and treated that way, this wins respect. If you are always willing to help others, you might think that you are becoming an expert in the areas where you work with others. But this can make people think badly of you because if you don't set limits, they might think you're weak or easy to control. 
This goes against a lead. They may then put their tasks on you because they know you won't say no because you are always willing to help others. When you say no, on the other hand, people may start to think about something they hadn't before. Respect. People will respect you more if you set limits and say no when you need to. This shows that you are honest and committed to your own goals. To have a better life, you should be honest and know when to say no. Also, make sure your relationships are fair. It's important to have relationships in your life. They make us feel connected, give us mental support, and make us feel like we belong. It is important, though, that these interactions are fair and help both sides. Relationships are balanced when everyone contributes and receives support in an equal and polite way. Your partner may take advantage of your kindness if you are too nice to them in a relationship. Reciprocity is a key part of healthy interactions. In other words, everyone is ready to help and give equally. You don't have to give women everything they want just because you're a man. There are limits to everything, and this is true for both men and women. If you are too nice, everything can feel like a duty. Four there is a good chance that you will become dependent on them. The Stoic theory stresses modesty and controlling oneself. Being kind and self-disciplined at the same time keeps us from getting stuck in bad habits and helps us have a good relationship with our actions and choices. When necessary wants become a normal part of life, the needs often keep going up, which makes it easy to become dependent on other people. Someone close to you might learn one day that you are abusing something, whether it's food, drink, or even gaming in any way. When people who care about you say something, you should really think about it. The first thing that people may do is get angry and deny there is a problem. This is a common behavior for people who are too busy with their own problems to see them. Remember that people who care about you always want the best for you, so pay attention to what they have to say. Their worries are meant to help you avoid problems and make progress toward the change you want. 5. Your goals will be pushed to the side. Living in a sensible and moral way is something that Stoics always stress as important. It is one of the most important Stoic qualities. To stay balanced and avoid giving up our identity and well-being for other people it's important to set limits and prioritize our duties. You run the risk of being bothered and worn out when you spend all your time on other people's concerns. If your goal is to be happy and whole, think about how you feel when you spend the weekend by yourself or get home every day to find no one there to greet you. If being alone is a way for you to get away from yourself, things can get very stressful. First and foremost, you will have to face yourself at some point. You can't avoid it. Second, your mood usually gets worse when you put other people's wants ahead of your own, which makes you feel like you're not important. Not that you shouldn't help other people, but that we should help by setting limits, because how can you help other people if you can't do your own work? It's important to take care of yourself if you want to be whole. Before you try to calm others, you should make sure you are happy, whole, and looked for. To put it another way, don't give chocolate to other people before you eat it yourself. This is not being selfish. In the same way, don't offer to help your friends clean their homes before you get your own in order and watch a movie or drink a glass of wine. First, take care of yourself and then show love to everyone else. Rule number six, set good limits to protect your health. Picture a fence around your yard your most valuable flowers, your green field, and the peaceful space you've made will be safe behind this fence. In the same way, setting healthy limits in your personal life and work is like putting up a fence around your mental health, physical health, and spiritual purity. In our lives, these lines are very important because they make it clear what we can and cannot accept. They're like personal lines that show where you stop and other people begin. Setting up good limits is a way to protect your heart, your mental health, and your physical health. Setting clear limits will keep you from feeling overloaded 
worn out and open to being abused by others. As was already said in the movie, one of the main reasons to guard your time and energy is to guard your goal and your energy. To get through life, you need to find balance. If you don't set limits, you might end up handling too many things at once. This can make your schedule too full, leave you with no time for self-care and cause your mental health to suffer. Number seven, surrounded by many people, but only helped by people who are looking for a chance. Stoic philosophy tells us to choose who to help by being wise and careful. We can tell the difference between honest people and people who want to take advantage of us if we can control ourselves and be objective. Don't waste your time or energy on things that can be solved on their own. People who used to think of you as a good friend may stop inviting you to their happy times and only talk to you when they need something or a favor. If we are honest with ourselves, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Most of the time, people don't ask their co-workers or people who work for them to social events or share their free time. Even though this makes sense, it doesn't always make sense or be fair. So, it's important to learn how to keep other people from taking advantage of you. We'll talk about some ways to do this soon. Make sure that the only people you let into your life are those who need help. Rarely let people into your life who want to help. Stoic philosophy can help us build relationships that are honest and good for both parties so we can get more out of this ancient knowledge. People who come into our lives are often drawn to the energy we give off. That is, when we give off negative energy, we eventually draw negative people like pessimists, people who have given up on life and people who don't care about themselves or the world. On the other hand, when our spirits are high, we draw people who are also upbeat, giving, kind, energetic, hardworking and happy. Over time, giving without expecting a clear return makes us use up too much energy, which makes us hum at a lower level. This makes us more likely to draw people who need something, sometimes opportunities. The most common time for this to happen is when someone comes to drain your energy but has no plans or resources to repay you. Eighth, you might become addicted to something. The Stoics pushed for balance and self-control. Being generous with our time and money helps us stay away from addictive habits and keep a good relationship with our actions and choices. We need more when there isn't enough of something in our lives, which is the perfect time to become addicted. That being said, someone close to you might understand that you drink, eat, or gamble too much one day. You should pay attention to what the people who care about you say, because your first response might be to get angry and say you don't have a problem. What happens though, is that people who are so caught up in their problems that they can't see, they have a problem, have this response. Remember that people who care about you only want what's best for you. Listen to what they say, because they want to help you stop falling and move forward. In number nine, you might make people suspicious. Despite the possibility that others will mistake or judge our actions, Stoicism tells us to be good. By following the rules and ideals of the Stoics, we build a real character that can stand up to false accusations. We might wish the world were different, but the truth is that not many people really have a generous heart. So, if you are one of them, you might make people suspicious instead of admiring and thanking you. But this isn't the most important thing to worry about. When you show kindness, people will quickly start to wonder what your real goals are. They might be wondering what's going on with you and if you have a secret reason for doing what you're doing. It's not necessarily true that you've met a group of naturally suspicious people. They might be honest. Most people who are too kind try to hide their true motives. To be safe, it's best to avoid interacting with them and say no to the help they offer. In order to reach your goals in life, you should always depend on yourself, no matter how long it takes. Keep an eye out for people who really want to help you get better because they could open doors for you. You shouldn't expect to get something in return for something you do, and you shouldn't help other people with the hope of getting something in return. 
We deal with these kinds of problems all the time, and some people may try to take advantage of us. This can happen in much more than one area, such as personal, professional or social ties. It is important to know and use the right tactics that help others in order to keep your life in balance and protect yourself. Next, we'll talk about six simple things you can do to keep yourself safe and keep your independence in all situations. Come learn with us and use what you learn to become more bold and smart in your daily life. Strategy number one, pay attention to how you feel. Being aware of yourself is a stoic idea that guides this first step. It's important to pay attention to your feelings and mood. Stoics believe that thinking about yourself can help you understand your responses and wants, which is very important for you. You can tell if you are overcommitting and causing yourself mental stress by paying attention to your feelings. This will help you change your attention and get back to a better balance. Think about how you feel when you help other people. Self-care and putting your own needs first are just as good as helping others, and they should make you feel good. If you feel too much stress, tiredness, anger, or being used, it means you need to take a moment to listen to your feelings. It's important not to ignore your feelings if something you don't have to do is making you feel bad. They are important signs of how healthy your mind is. Strategy number two, stop being afraid to say no. Never say no to someone or something that drains your energy. It sets limits and lets you escape unpleasant situations. It shows what you stand for when you say no to something. You're not someone who always agrees with everyone. The best answer you can give is for stressful scenarios when you agree to everything. Following the Stoic lessons, this approach includes being aware of how valuable your time and energy are and deliberately dividing them in a healthy way. One way to learn self-control is to say no when you feel rushed or when the requests aren't fair. The word no is often linked to negativity and depression, which can be hard for some people. You need to get over your fear of using it at certain times in your life. When someone asks us to do more than we can, bad things can happen in our lives if we don't. You should get used to saying no. It might even help to practice in front of a mirror and tell yourself that's the only way to get your freedom back and stay safe. What we need to remember is that every situation is different. These tips can help you keep your mind healthy and your relationships in better balance. There is a time and place for you, according to Strategy 3. Stoic ideas like self-discipline and self-respect are at the heart of this plan. These are the most important things in your life. It is very important to give yourself time and space to take care of yourself. If you really enjoy something like painting, sports, music, your hobbies, or anything else that gets you excited, try to finish your work as soon as possible so you have time for these things. You should think this is so important that you have to set aside time for it every day and every week. If you ask them to help you during this time, they may do something religiously important and be willing to help for themselves as well as you. Do not control without feeling guilty and enjoy this time. Also, do not cheat just for yourself. If you don't want to be too rigid, you can offer to help at a later time. Just keep in mind that you will only be able to help when it works for you because you have your own life. This plan is going to be very helpful for you. Practice daily gratitude as part of strategy four. A daily practice of gratitude is not only good for the soul, but it can also make your life more positive and inspiring. Every day, taking a moment to think about what you're thankful for can completely change how you feel and what you think. Focusing on the good things in life makes you feel better and makes you happier. Keeping a gratitude journal is a useful way to do this. This journal lets you write down your daily feelings and thoughts, as well as important events and moments. This helps you remember important events in your life and learns more about you and your long-term goals. When you write down happy and thankful thoughts on a regular basis, 
your mind slowly gets rid of bad thoughts and worries. This makes room for good energy, which makes you happier and better prepared to deal with life's challenges. You can look at everything in life with a more positive attitude and look for chances in everything. Don't be afraid to write down every day what you're thankful for. It will become an important part of your life. This could change your life for the better and help you stay motivated and positive every day. Goal setting is the fifth strategy. When you make an action plan, you should be clear about your goals and make plans to get your life in order. You can get closer to your life goals and objectives by setting clear, attainable goals. It's normal to make small steps forward, so enjoy the battle you're in with yourself as you work toward your goals. These extra tips can be added to the first four we gave you, and they will help you improve your quality of life and spirituality in both your personal and professional life. Identify energy vampires and stay away from them, according to Strategy 6. Stoic ideas like self-discipline and knowing yourself guide this plan. It's important to know which relationships are good for you and which ones can drain your energy. Get away from people who consistently drain your energy and don't add anything good to your life. Everything else is less important to me than having peace of mind. That way, I can do everything I've planned. When we have direction in life, we tend to stick to it. But not having peace every day can slow us down or even bring us down. If you try to help someone who drains your energy, know that it might not work. These people usually have a lot of complaints, problems, and bad things to say about life. They don't really want their problems to be solved because then they'd have to stop complaining, which they hate the thought of. In conclusion, Stoicism teaches us that everything we do in life, even being kind, should be balanced. If we give too little, we might look selfish, but if we give too much, we might run out of energy, time, or even money. Remember that running out of money is one of the most dangerous things that can happen. So, the best thing to do is usually to choose the optimal options that let us balance putting others first and taking care of ourselves. Remember the magic word no when you're not sure what to do. I really hope that these ideas have been useful to you. As we wrap up our exploration of Stoicism and its application in the modern world, it's clear that this ancient philosophy offers more than just historical insights. It provides a practical guide for living with purpose, resilience and tranquility. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can control, let go of what we cannot, and embrace life's challenges as opportunities for growth. By applying these timeless principles, we can cultivate a mindset that not only withstands life's ups and downs, but thrives in the face of them. Remember, the journey into Stoicism is not a one-time endeavor, but a lifelong practice. It's about making small, consistent changes to our thoughts and actions, which over time can transform our lives. Whether it's practicing gratitude, developing self-awareness, or learning to view obstacles as opportunities, each step you take on this path can lead to a more fulfilling and balanced life. As you move forward, keep the Stoic teachings close to your heart. Let them guide you through the complexities of modern life, helping you to find peace in chaos, strength in adversity, and joy in the simple things. The journey may not always be easy, but the rewards, inner peace, resilience, and a deep sense of satisfaction are well worth the effort. Thank you for joining us on this journey into Stoicism. May the wisdom of the Stoics inspire you, guide you, and help you to live your best life today and every day.